Hi, I'm Nathan. I'm Cameron, and I'm Eaton. <laughs> and I'm Nathan this week, too. Oh, no, I'm David. That was last week. Yeah. And today we are watching The Hobbit, The Battle of the Five Armies. Good <laughs> Lord, I hate that fucking title <laughs> so much. You know what would have been great if this movie was called The Desolation of Smog and the second movie didn't happen? Well, that was the original idea. Because I've seen all three of them, and this mm. one and um, the first one are really well paced. I feel mm -hmm. they're really well paced. The second one is just, you know, oh. it's like it's like a man who stands up, do something. Maybe that's why they changed the name of the, the mm -hmm. name of the title, so so that people like we assure you, stuff happens. Yeah. Battle. There's five armies. They're battling. Stuff will happen in this one. We promise. And I haven't seen it yet, but to prepare for it, I did watch the two previous films, the extended editions. Of the two so you know films. all the details. Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I picked this one because I wanted to do a Lord of the Rings movie, and then the entire series, especially a Hobbit one. And this is this just came out on uh, video this past week. A video? What? And this, yeah, I, we're watching it on two VHS tapes uh -huh. right now. Uh, but yeah, so um, there's a lot to talk about, especially with the Hobbit and Lord of the Rings in general. A lot of things I like. Oh, Black A lot of things that. It pissed me off. You mean like the Black Adder like character? Like Black Adder right here, the, uh, <laughs> the general, yes. Well, <laughs> Rowan Atkinson <laughs> should be playing his toady, by the way. Mm, yeah. Oh my god, that would have been brilliant. But ladies and gentlemen, this is the great Stephen Fry, and I'm mm. very happy to say that we've got Stephen Fry in a Middle Earth movie. That makes me happy. <laughs> Even if I'm to understand, you know, he's not in it for very long. This is one of the we problems. We also have Stephen Colbert <laughs> in a Middle that was, Earth. That's in the second one. Yeah, yeah. the second he's, one. But he now, yes, he got to appear in Middle Earth as well. That was great. And we but had the, um, Tariel. They got Kate from Lost over mm -hmm. here. Finally got off the island. Yeah. The island was Middle Earth was the big twist, we got it turns out. Se sexy Legolas dwarf. <laughs> no, that's Kate from Lost. <laughs> no, I was referring to the I, I know, I know, I know they look very similar. Right. I know they look very... Attractive okay, I can definitely see an issue with the opening of this film. Yeah. Is that it's one of those where it doesn't feel like a proper. Begin I do like how it's like pace, like holy shit, the dragon's coming. Mm -hmm. I like this so. But far. the second movie cut off at, on a cliffhanger, which yeah. none of the Lord of the Rings movie has done. I mean, they they've had their endings, oh, everything's yeah. come to a conclusion, yes. and then they continue, and it feels natural. Yeah. But I was surprised when I saw Desolation of Smog for the first time. I was like, holy shit, it's a cliffhanger. And I wasn't sure how to feel about it. Like, I kind of liked it. It was kind of an interesting thing to do. We hadn't seen it before, but at the same time, I'm like, ugh. Like, it kind of uh, left a bad taste in my mouth. I really... You know, I, I have a great story when I went to go see Fellowship for the Ring of the Rings in, for the first time in theater. After it was over, um, somebody goes, that's at... That's oh, how, God, that's I remember that. the movie. <laughs> was that. Was that Ben? No, I didn't... I didn't this, was, I, this was before I knew him. This is when I still live, uh, lived with my parents. I feel so like, it was a while ago. Yeah, so now we come in right in the middle of everything, and there's a lot of stuff happening, but there's no, like, recap God, I love the, going on. I we love need a, the design There's smell. Peter Jackson's daughter just uh, appeared. For, just died? No, no, just she was in a boat. She didn't die. But she's been in, I think, all six movies. She's had a little cameo in all oh, six. Another Lord nice. of the Rings story was um, after I... After the fell after fellowship had come out, I was in a bookstore and um, I had just passed by the fantasy section. Wow! And two people had walked in there and so we went, "Wait a second, they have all three books out, but the other two movies aren't even out yet." Oh, God. oh of course, of course, of course, someone said that. Yes. I I have to mention this. Just seeing the image of of the master just passing by and all that the the boat filled with gold, I am reminded of the. Of the 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 legend. John, of, wait, of, you saw John Sim? <laughs> but I mean, like the epic of Gilgamesh, right? You know, the idea of like getting everything onto your boat, the gold and the prices, like artifacts, animals, you name it, and just during a great flood. And of course, that would be one of the inspirations for Noah's Ark. Just these big stories about you know, flooding. Let's get everything on the boat and try to survive. I really feel like Waka -waka. this entire sequence was meant to be at the end of the other one. Yeah. The well, it's supposed to be in the mi when um, when they decided to put the movie into three movies instead of two. The original cutoff point between the movies was the barrel chase. That was yeah, supposed to be the big climax mean, of the the quote unquote first film. That would have been good because that, that sequence is awesome. And only but but um, when you read the Hobbit books, I always thought that that is where the midpoint is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I don't know. So I don't know why you would. So so they built up this whole big. I liked the ending of yeah. Desolation of Small. All the action stuff I thought was neat and creative. 
but then they end on this cliffhanger, and then it's like, oh, okay. I, like, love, <laughs> I really do like these images. So <laughs> no, the movie, all the movies look great. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah. you know, you kind of need... Clearly, this is a series where you don't put, like, a recap at the beginning, but... Yeah. Yeah, how else are you supposed to remind people of what's, what's going on? You need one of those, you know, Batman intros where... Previously on The Hobbit, I our caped crusader Bilbo Baggins accidentally let loose the fury of smog onto the people of Lake Town. I... Our, be our bearded wizard Gandalf is in a prickly situation. And Thorin don't <laughs> give a shit. <laughs> Will he survive? Tune in. Through the Battle of the Five Armies. Oh, there's Bomber. I love Bomber because he's, he's fat and he doesn't say anything. I like Bomber, uh, despite the fact that he doesn't say Like, he's one of the more memorable characters. He doesn't have a single fucking line in the entire series. But he's so series. awesome. <laughs> but no, that's not true. He has, this, he has you know, uh, uh, he has several lines that, um, you know, Melissa, Melissa McCarthy uses in her movies where, you know, farts. Oh. <laughs> and then he falls down a lot. See? He does, he... he He's a comedic genius. <laughs> he farts and falls down. But it's interesting when you read, you guys have all read The oh, Hobbit, yeah. the book, right? Yes, okay. yes. Because in the book, they really don't describe any of the dwarves, Except other than the, maybe the color of their yeah, the cloaks. Color of, oh, yeah, the color of the cloaks. But it is described that Bomber is the fat one yes. many times. So oh. that's the only real character description yeah. you get of any of the dwarves. And one of the things that I love about it, and uh, just to... How what happened to Bomber <laughs> afterwards? And as well, spoiler alert: Bomber survives. He lives to be a very old, extremely fat dwarf. So fat to the point to where other dwarves would have to pick him up and carry him around. It's interesting if you watch the special features for uh, uh, the first Hobbit movie, and they're doing like makeup tests and screen tests for all that stuff. And they feed him some lines, Bomber, and he's like kind of interacting with Peter Jackson just uh -huh. so they can kind of you know see how it looks on camera. And his voice it just sounds like an average, everyday, you know, kind of British voice. And it's, I don't know, it's, it's not what you'd expect when you see the vision of, uh, you'd, of Bomber. You'd expect, hello, everybody. Yeah, so I, you know. <laughs> Run, Bomber. Just, just one way for the mint, Bomber. Just one. <laughs> Run, Bomber. <laughs> oh, yeah, I feel good. Huh? <laughs> That was you know, a very you know, good Bomber impression. You know what would be there. really great? If, you know, B if Bomber just sounded exactly like Seth MacFarlane doing Peter Griffin. Eh, Bilbo! <laughs> yay! Yeah, we yay, get the ring! Yay. Or if he opened his mouth and went, Da wonga wonga, ho 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 ho. <coughs> no, that would have been great if he was the one who spoke, I don't want to say dwarvish, but... Oh god, what is the language? I forgot it yeah, is for dwarvish. the dwarves. But yeah. he spoke it... And kind of, you know, instead of the other one who has an axe in his head, which I I love that. Yeah, little bit I like about the idea it. of the one with the axe in his head only speaks Dorvish. That's a yeah. neat, uh, and that's I, a neat thing. And I do want to point out that we are talking about all this right now. As a, and yeah, this is a good little moment between son and father. <coughs> yes, but I do think to myself, it would have it would have been better if we had seen it all completed well, instead of having it cut yeah. right in the middle well, that, between two and, movies. And do you, do you think? Do you think the reason for that is like all the kind of padding that's put in, or yeah. care, or stuff that's not in the book? Like as much as I like uh, Sylvester McCoy as Radagast, mm -hmm. I could live without him being in the movie. I love me some Radagast, but I, I could live without him being in the movie. Just like yeah, I don't, exactly. just like I don't yeah. mind uh, the whole thing with um, Tariel, who's a new, the brand new character, and uh, Keely. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't mind that at all. But I could live without it. But you can it. do without it. Yeah. I can live without that. I mean, Radagast I'd like to keep just because more wizards is a-okay by me. It's and kind of the same thing I feel with uh, Jackson's King Kong. I, I really Jimmy. like that movie. I think it's I think it's really <laughs> yeah, entertaining. I, it's my favorite version of Dis King Kong. Despite the fact, Jimmy. I think you could cut out at least 45 minutes Jimmy. and it'd be the exact same movie. It would be just as effective and, and just as entertaining. Oh. Just, they put a lot in there. In this, you know, you, you, oh god, the image! This is why I have to say this. It's beautiful. This is it. probably the best representation of a dragon that I. I don't know if I'm going. They put a lot of makeup seen. on Benedict Cumberbatch yeah. for the scene. Look at all that makeup. But, it's oh amazing. my god, this is all practical. <laughs> that is just a wonderful design. It is. It's definitely. I would rank it up there with Maleficent with uh, with Dragon Slayer. It might be even better. Who knows? Ah, Maleficent's still my favorite dragon. It's very hard to top that. The animated movie? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. The Sleeping Beauty. You mean yeah. Sleeping Beauty, not the yeah. Angelina Jolie. Well, I mean, that she turns into Maleficent. Turns that was something that was weird to me. I had no idea that that character was even remotely a big deal. <laughs> I had no clue. Oh, Maleficent. People love I had Maleficent. no clue that she... Yeah. That, yeah. 
it was a big, big deal, probably just because you know I always thought like you know Jafar mm-hmm. and it's also a really and boring like Disney movie. Aww. not much. I mean, Sleeping Beauty is fine; it's beautiful, looks great, but man, oh, not much go. happens. Isn't it? Isn't it just a movie where it's like she's not a villain? She had bad things she happen to her. She started out not as. Oh wait, a wait, we're talking about Maleficent or Sleeping Beauty? Yeah. Maleficent. Talk about the Angelina Jolie one. Oh, that one is. It could have been better. She's not a bad person. She just had bad stuff done to her. She got. <laughs> she got raped. <laughs> That's what I saw. The scene is when she got. She got raped, but. <laughs> but I actually do like this. This whole connection between father and son. That's a nice little moment. I, I might end up cutting your ear off. There's, there's, there's nothing. There's nothing wrong with with this with this yeah. movie. I mean, he, or the Hobbit movies at all. Even though I think the second one's one pretty much all padding. That's a um, lot. You, you can tell they added a lot yeah. of stuff into the second one. But I will say this: as far as Jeez. as far as oh, I don't know what to say. Prequel trilogies, though. <laughs> oh, this is this far is, better. This now is, that this that is, is an interesting comparison because is. it is very similar to. I mean, you could definitely. I've heard people say, and I. It's kind of hard to disagree that the Lord of the Rings trilogy was kind of a Star Wars for its generation. I guess yeah. you could yeah, say. Yeah, I'd say that. Yeah. And then, of course. Oh, you have this good. pre-established uh, story. Oh, that's really Years cool. later, they decide to do another trilogy that takes place before the events and stuff like that. So you could make you that can, comparison. Yeah, you can make that comparison, but where the comparison... But these movies are way more yeah. entertaining. They're, 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 <laughs> yeah. where, where the uh, comparison ends is that um, these movies are... Better made? No, 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 no. They um, are. No, no. It's just uh, no, no, no. You're, you're you're using too many words. Um, these movies are what? good, yeah. good. <laughs> the, and um, they also use Christopher Lee in a way that um, Works. a filmmaker would do, and not a total retard. <laughs> okay, okay, Dooku, you tell, go in Tell us what you really think, Cameron. Oh, when we <laughs> when we eventually do the prequels, you'll hear everything I have to say. Yeah. Yeah. But um, all I'm gonna say is this is actually a good prequel trilogy. It's not. I will. I, it's, it's, not it's, it's not perfect. It's not, and it's not definitely not as good as Lord of the Rings. Oh, which is weird because I prefer reading The Hobbit than to reading Lord of the Rings. Oh, me too. Oh, but God, I would prefer yes. to watch the Lord of the Rings trilogy mm-hmm. than watch the Hobbit trilogy. And that's not saying anything bad about these movies. <coughs> I will just, say, I, we have a title. There's the title. We have a title. God, I hate that fucking you know, title. I had the titular line in The Hobbit: The Battle of the Five Armies. You did not have that titular yeah, line. Yeah, I did. No, you didn't. <laughs> It was me and Andrew. I was talking to him. I was teaching Andrew how to how to drive the Hobbit. Ian McKellen. And Ian, McKellen Ian McKellen actually brought that cage from home. <laughs> oh my! Are you sure he didn't steal it from Keenan? <laughs> no, what, now, what is um, Gandalf's other name? Because Melandril, Methandril is like what is like Elvish for um, Stormcrow. Gandalf Stormcrow? No, it's a it's a Lauren. I I don't know. His name is no. It is a Lauren. Jojo. No, it is a Lauren. Right. Storm. God, that should have been Rowan Atkinson. I hate this character. I I, I, I no seriously. I <laughs> oh, get geez. that. You, you'll you'll see he's, later he's, on. He's okay. supposed to be Grima Wormtooth essentially. For, I, for I get that. Ste- I get that Stephen Fry worm, needed no, like a little a little wormy yeah. sidekick, but. His progression in this movie, I just absolutely—it's one of the things I absolutely hate about no, this movie. No, I like that Evangeline Lilly's doing a lot more now because she lets you just do the Hobbit. She's going to be an Ant Man now, as um, mm-hmm. yeah. I th- everyone's assuming she's going to be the Wasp. Let's mm, look at that oh, sexy dwarf. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. <laughs> nobody cares. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Nobody freaking cares. Nobody cares. I kind of care. Aw. <laughs> I, 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 get, I get that they want to give, because in the in the book, for people who have read the book, they already know that, spoiler alert, Feely and Keely both die in the, the Battle of the Five Armies. Um, so I do get that they want to give, I probably, you know, one of them more of an emotional connection. Uh-oh. No, is it just and and they and she does have a nice scene at the end where a- after he dies she has this nice scene with uh Legolas's father whatever his name is I can't remember. There's uh, too many fucking names. Toriel. I don't, Tar- I don't Tar- know. Tarell. They all kind of sound the same. Now. Tyrell Corporation. Tyrell Corporation. She has a great conversation with the Tyrell Corporation about the Nexus Seven yeah. androids that are coming out. Uh, <laughs> they're, but, one, um, they're one better than the Nexus Six. But like, yeah. 
But like you said, I don't mind the love story kind of thing, oh. but I, I could do without it. I, it's like, I don't mind it. It does its job. Mm. But I, it's oh. it's just like Radagast. I could do without Radagast. Yeah. He has the least amount the, of makeup for all the dwarves as well. That little would you put makeup on that face? Well, of course not. But he has, he has that little extra on the on the tip of his nose, and she, compared to like how much so many of the other dwarves have, uh, they must have been so fucking pissed. Wasn't it the same thing that Anakin <laughs> gave Padme? They're with a little necklace <laughs> and uh, yeah, that he ex- gives her at the beginning. Oh, of that's Phantom the one Menace. thing I have to yeah, give. This. Except you want to know what? I buy that well, love story a lot well, more than. But I do you know, Padme. but if I may, I have to point this out. Um, Anakin gives hit her, hit, uh, her whatever the fuck in Phantom Menace, right? Yeah. Then movie, no, in sec- no, then the second it, movie, yeah. it's like whatever. Then the third movie's like, do you remember that? In this case, it's like second film, talk about this, show it. Third yeah. film, here it is. Yeah, yeah they bump, bring bump, it up bump. right out of yeah. nowhere. It's almost at the funeral like, scene. It's, it's almost, like, oh yeah, I forgot that that happened. Yeah. It's <laughs> almost like Peter Jackson is very, very competent, and George Lucas is clueless. <laughs> and look, actually, and I know that people make fun of like the whole CGI and what have you, but it's like, oh, majority of it is actually really good sets. Yeah, they, I mean, they, yeah, this there's is, definitely this a lot is, that's more real. I mean, right now, real all this, is, yeah, this is all being shot outside, mm-hmm. right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh wait, what's that effort again? I think that's a bad word on a Lucas set. Effort. Although, although for the end of Desolation of Smog, when they had to come up with all of that, you know, Smelly. end battle scene, they had to do it all blue screen and cool. all CGI. But still, it looks. But at least they were running. But it, but it kind of <laughs> yeah, also but but it stuff's made, happening. Yeah, yeah, at least they're at least they're running. And Peter Jackson <laughs> moves the camera around. So again, Pe- and I will say. With these, maybe it's just me, but with these three Hobbit movies, I don't know if it's because there's more CGI and the and the effects are better, or because of the whole 24 frame or what is it, 48 frame rate kind of thing. It, it doesn't well, look it, it doesn't look as real and gritty as well, Lord of the Rings did. It looks a little more well, see, see, the thing, fantasy like. Well, here's something I, th- yeah, I thought about the uh, yeah. at the 48 FPS thing. I thought only certain theaters did that. Only certain theaters it's did. True. I remember yeah. everyone yeah. else did 24 FPS. I mean, mm-hmm. I remember I was in the theater seeing the first Hobbit. And again, this is another tale of stupidity. Um, somebody before the, I think, no, after the movie came out, somebody goes, hey, you know, some places are showing this in a higher frame rate instead of 24 frames per 24 FPS. Yeah, I don't even get the big deal. I mean, video games are 60 frames per second. And they look way better than movies. Oh. It's like they're kind of missing the point yeah. of why movies look oh, the way they God. do. Oh, God. Did you guys see the other ones in the 48 frame rate? I did. No, no I didn't. Just I the didn't. Re- I didn't just, want to. Just I the s- reviews of it just kind of put me off. I, I did see it, like, regular, yeah. you know, took it, and they filmed it 24. Mm. And I was like, this is gorgeous. Yeah. I, I did see all three movies. One, The first time I saw saw each one, I Man, went ahead and saw it in the 48 Man, frames. Man, and then the I second time I saw it, I would see it in the 24 but I gotta say, the 48 frames, <laughs> it's it, it, it's weird, it, you're not used to it, but it does make the 3D look better. It makes 3D better, it makes it move smoother, but other than that, ugh, it, it, there, there's it's, only, it's not that great. There's only been one movie since this whole like, 3D revival that I thought was good with its 3D. Dread? Exactly. Dread is amazing. Dread did two things that I usually hate in movies. But did them so they worked into the narrative, made the narrative stronger. That's 3D and bullet time. I hate the overuse of bullet time. <laughs> but Dread makes it part of the narrative. <coughs> and just like The Matrix did. Mm. I have a couple more movies I'm really more positive on how they, you know, saw them in 3D, how they used them to tell the story and such. One of them is Dread, the others were Hugo, Life of Pi. And gravity, and the thing about gravity, gravity is great. The thing about gravity was the 3D was that wasn't using the 3D cameras because they couldn't do it because of all the shots Alfonso Cuarón wanted to do. It's they had to do that, you know, post conversion. Mm-hmm. It just shows you how good it is. Now, here's my question though, because I'm looking at these. I was talking to Nathan before the commentary. Um, Guillermo del Toro was originally <coughs> supposed to direct this film, I wish and. He had. And there are many moments in this, in particular, what the what the the Lonely Mountain looks like, the the dwarf halls mm-hmm. and such. They look very similar to something Guillermo del Toro would would uh, design. So Nathan, how much was incorporated from del Toro's work? Well, I don't know. That's I the think thing. A lot. When they, I honestly believe a lot. Because if you watch the all the behind the scenes stuff of the extended editions, which is really good, it's like each movie has like nine hours of extras in the extended editions. And they do uh, show some stuff with uh, Guillermo del Toro. And because everything was taking so long, he dropped out. <coughs> Excuse me. 
And so when Peter Jackson Jackson stepped in, he said, "All this all looks great, but it's not mine. This is now my movie. I have to kind of make it his own." So he did change a lot of it, but I don't know how much he changed. If it's a big change, if just little things here and there, they they, they don't really say. So why yeah. did Del Toro leave? Everything was taken to the the movie yeah. wasn't officially green lighted. For a really long I time, mean green lit. Oh, <laughs> Whatever. Uh, well, it's like thank think, you very much. Think of it this way. <laughs> Grammar Nazi. Well, think of it this way. Um, Guillermo del Toro had Hellboy two, two thousand eight, mm -hmm. and then all this, and also the failure of At the Mountains of Madness being made. His next film, that, I think that's happening again now. Hopefully, but his next one was Pacific Rim, which came out in two thousand thirteen. That's yeah. five years of nothing. And yeah, that's he, sad. He that's was true. down in New Zealand. He was doing a lot of uh, early casting kind of work <laughs> and all of the uh, design and whatnot and helping write the script. But the green was ne the the movie was never officially green lit, Cameron. So he, he finally got to the point where he's like, I've been working on this for so long and nothing's really happening. I have to leave because I've been having to give up all these other opportunities. <laughs> have you okay, you guys have seen those um, uh, videos on Vine and YouTube of uh, RKOs out of nowhere? Where they take the little, like, cut out of Randy Orton. Yeah. Hand. I just looked at this as soon as that shot of him in the gold thing uh -huh. and thought of somebody doing that with Thor and <laughs> having him swimming in the gold like he Scrooge McDuck. And, yeah, well, that's what I was thinking. It's like, why is he getting obsessed by that? I thought ducks were more obsessed with big mountains of gold than that's, You know, okay, th th that brings up a, qu a question not so much with ducks. Ducks and dragons. But with they dragons. I know that this is supposed to be someone screening a dra that essentially the real reason is <laughs> the dragon's lust for gold is also one big metaphor for greed bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But if you think about it, why would a giant talking animal give a shit about gold? I think it's like, I, I'm trying to remember, wasn't there something where Tolkien did go into detail about I don't dragon's remember. love it, of gold? I really don't remember because <laughs> if it's in The Hobbit, it's been a couple years since I read it and I don't clearly remember. Um, Nathan? Do you know? I, I, <coughs> excuse me. Yeah, I got something in my throat tonight. Um, not my, really, my but I'm, I'm sure there's. I'm sure there's all this mythology backstory that a lot of uber nerds know about, and, and I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you the story about all the dragons. <laughs> the dragon's name is Kabundungungung, no. and he came from the land of Snagandangung. You know, Stephen. We get if we we you know keep this in mind. If we ever meet Stephen Colbert, ask him because that motherfucker will know. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. He'll know everything. He, he is encyclopedic when it yes. comes to um, Tolkien. <coughs> can we yeah. talk? Can we talk about for a sec how great of an actor <laughs> uh, Martin Freeman is? Because mm -hmm. he is just fucking brilliant, in my opinion. I think he's great. You can make a silent film with him. He would be really mm -hmm. good in it. No, seriously, like, he, he plays, like, a Harold Lloyd-like character. I think he'd do a really good job of it. Was uh, Smaug meant to be the last <laughs> dragon? I, I think I read that in, I in The Hobbit. I think book. so. That's, that, sounds, that sounds about right. He should have laid a bunch of eggs, like, in the Godzilla remake. <laughs> oh, God. Ugh. They mean the shitty one, not the yeah. really damn good one. Yeah, with Mayor, <laughs> with Mayor Ebert and his assistant, Gene. <laughs> <laughs> We'll get we'll get to that one sometime. Folks. Even yeah, the mayor of New York, even though he lives in Chicago. Yeah, yeah, yeah they're both big <laughs> cities. What's the difference? <laughs> oh, it's a piggy. That's a big ass pig. Hiya! <laughs> also, so <laughs> no, so this is when Legolas met Aragorn, right? Oh wait, that's not. Oh god! Oh, we'll get to that scene. Oh, I will bitch the shit out of that scene. Is no, that, no, is there, that, there's, uh, there's a scene at the end. Oh, we'll get to it. And, oh, you'll know it when you I see it. I, didn't I know Eric, fucking hate I didn't know scene. Eric Bischoff is in this movie. <laughs> you know, uh, the, uh, the weird thing, I don't think they ever refer to in the uh, movie so much, maybe just in passing, but in Middle Earth, like, human being lifespans go in, like, the 200. Well, it depends as some of them do and some of them don't. Well, it, they were going to like 60, well, it's supposed to be 60 but, years old. But he was a specific kind of man. He's part though. of a specific race yeah. that live longer than normal yeah. but they were also but, or something like that. But that didn't matter to elves. Well, well elves so, I, so I share the same view as elves. All you <coughs> puny humans. <laughs> you bastard elves living long. Did you know? No wonder they're so cocky and arrogant and racist. Remember when, remember when this movie came out? And, and everyone we all saw, have to talk like this because it's everyone, an action movie. And everyone saw how badass Legolas was. Everyone went, oh man, if they make a Zelda movie, it should be Orlando Bloom and oh, Link. Uh, no. Please no. Well, excuse me, Cameron. 
I just asked if anybody remembered that. Holy shit. Not like it's my idea. Even though I will be the odd man out and say, I wouldn't have a problem with that idea. It'd be too predictable. That'd yeah. be the only issue with it. Now, he changed his uh, hands. In the other two movies, he had like a little fork. Yes. A little fork hand. Now fork, he's got his, fork, fork. That must have hurt to have to change out. Yeah. Well, you see, what happened was he he, he upgraded. He's, he's he leveled up. His armor. He leveled up. <laughs> you see, what happened was he was busy out in that part of the woods beating up hogs and such, and he gained enough points to level up no, to get this. This is something that, that kind of struck me as odd, and it feels like a very Del Toro in design. Yeah, the wargs the, and the orcs. Yeah, especially the orc armor that like the main orcs wear, because especially that guy that just passed that had like the, the metal spike plates mm-hmm. in his head. He reminded me of the, uh, he, he reminded me of like um, the uh, the oh. wanderers, you know, in Road Warriors, the guy who was yeah. He, mm. Just, just walk away. <laughs> walk away. But they are really... It's like, I'm... Oh. I'm sorry, I'm kind of going giddy over Evangeline. No. Like she's really <laughs> I mean, I'm just, I just really like the fact that... Well, here's the thing when it comes to comparing these prequel films and such, and that is the one thing that I think this film has, definitely over the Star Wars prequels, <laughs> is that with the Star Wars prequels, you have to be familiar with the Star Wars universe it's like and it fails because George Lucas is like oh you can watch them 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 but that doesn't work because episode 4 explains what it is to be a Jedi what's the force and all that stuff first one, what's a lightsaber first one doesn't do any of that first yeah. one doesn't it, it, it does that well the first film in this movie the first one so, Phantom Menace somehow manages to yeah. not do that and contradict yeah. everything in yeah. Star Wars but in the first film of The Hobbit what they do is they pretty much say hey this is a prequel. We're going to be showing you what yeah. happened before Lord and of the it, Rings. And it even opens with, um, you know... Uh, with Frodo. With, no, with Bilbo. A, with Bilbo saying, there once was a hobbit. He lived yeah. in a hole. Not a wet hole, a dark hole. Yeah. A comfortable hole. Like a vagina. The most comfortable of all holes. Oh, my. Right, honey? I just agreed with you. I'm the one who brought it up. <laughs> Shit. Ah, ah. That dog just gave me the weirdest look. Okay, <laughs> He'll do. He'll look at people weird if you say yeah. certain phrases. Yeah. Like now, are they on the way to help? Like Steve? vagina and hole, cocaine. <laughs> Just looked at me. I'll, I'll turn his head and I'll try one more. And then another one that gets him. Butt sex. No, they, they didn't get it yeah. that time. It's oh look. Before. Apparently, he likes cocaine. There's Radagast, that silly cross-eyed. This is the doctor. Yep. Where's the spoons? No, that's Tommy Wiseau. Even though Tommy Wiseau <laughs> might be a doctor. Oh God. Please we know. will get the Daleks, huh? <laughs> and here comes the uh, here comes what I like to call the Middle Earth Power Rangers scene. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, Nathan, With our uh, powers combined, that's kind of what happens. Yeah, that's exactly what. <laughs> fuck, Saruman might Saruman might as well be the green fucking <laughs> ranger. We're like, whoa, whoa. Well, that's not very kind. Hey. Uh-oh, we have an, we have an Academy we'll actually Award get winner. To see, yeah, we get to see her kick some ass in these movies for once. Not till the last, uh, the final movie. Does she Look, just get, get the, to actually do stuff? Look how strong she is. Just yeah. give the orcs your gasoline and they will go away. In black speech? Well, that's what... <laughs> The language is that of Mordor. Why didn't they say Mordor speech then? Because if you well, read like, like the black because, because, why are you saying it's racist? Well if you're reading if you're just watching the subtitles. Uh oh, who's that? You know what the Okay, yeah, we got okay, have, have you guys ever seen the um the Lord of the Rings animated thing? Yes. Oh yeah. The the way the um the Nazgul look right now reminds me of the way they looked in that. Oh god, I remember that. How they were like all black and red? Yeah, and it was all it was like Are you all saying Peter Jackson is stealing ideas from the other movies. I'm, well, he's got that one in, shot in that's, Hollywood. It's a homage. He's got two shots that I know for sure he that were from the the <laughs> Lord of the Rings film in the seventies, and that was the proud foot, proud feet moment, mm-hmm. and the bit where they're under the the log. Mm-hmm. But the difference is, well, Ralph Bakshi's film is a complete mess. His films, Lord oh, of the God, Rings, yes. Peter Jackson films, are wonderful. It's morphin' time. <laughs> And yes, we got even more awesome. They dragged a 90-plus-year-old Christopher Lee to kick some butt. And um, let me just say, once again, I think Saruman has a better fight here than he does doing all the flippy-dippy shit 
in any of the prequels. Yeah, and here's the other thing is that bear in mind, everyone else filmed this in New Zealand. Christopher Lee filmed everything on a green screen in, yeah, he in had England. To, he had he was, to be in England because he was too old to travel. Yeah. And yeah, this is really well done. Yeah, because, because you see what's going on, and it isn't like they're still doing cool moves, but it isn't like let's do flippy floppy. Exa- exactly, it's it's not it's not a goddamn glow stick show. Yeah, you know, it's, it's not like you're watching a bunch of losers at a rave. That's what I like about the Peter Jackson films. When they, is that you do feel the sweat and the blood and the dirt and the grit mm-hmm. from these movies and. I mean, like I said, like the that. Hobbit ones, I don't know, they just don't feel quite as gritty and yeah. and realistic well, as, th- as the Lord of the Ring ones. Well, I think yeah. one of the reasons might be, and this could be stylist, uh, stylistically on purpose, but yeah. the Hobbit, as compared to the Lord of the Rings books, it's considered more of a, uh, an all-ages children's story. Yeah. So, oh, yeah, definitely. Oh, bunnies! I want that bunny sled. <laughs> You're weak, bitch. <laughs> Goddamn Gandalf. He's still got Dookie. And that's the only time Ian McKellen would say that. (laughs) Ew, gross. Right on my wizard staff. (laughs) Bunny sled. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna trade my car for a bunny sled. Now, are they really hurting these ghosts? I mean, they're ghosts. Well, magic, I, I guess. That's where and the, then that, they just show up again in Lord of the Rings, so it's like, yeah. what are they really doing? Hurting them for so just they, long enough to get away? Occupying them just long enough for Gandalf to get away. Like, let's get out of here! <laughs> oh, too late. Now, I love... This idea, what they did here with the, the you know, the Eye of Sauron, where in the like the iris itself, right? Not the iris, like the, you know, that's Sauron, right? That mm-hmm. like, that black slit yeah. is him. I really do like that. I thought it was a really. Now, did good... Christopher Lee have to travel when he shot the uh, Lord of the Rings original? Oh yes, he did. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. But he was a younger old. He was man. also twenty years younger. <laughs> also, Kate Blanchett just turned into Jennifer Lopez. But except she's hot. I'm sorry, her going all goth, that's, that's kind of <laughs> hot. Uh, I hope no one has epilepsy watching this scene right now. I kind of hope they, they do. They will fall on the ground. kind of hope they do. <laughs> now, Christopher Lee's a, huge, a really big Lord of the Rings fan as well, isn't he? Yes, he He's reads, really knowledgeable he reads the that. books every year. And as he gets older, it's becoming more fun because yeah. he gen- genuinely does forget them. Aww. <laughs> oh. And he's the only person who's associated with the project who, who actually met J.R.R. Tolkien. Only guy. Where did he get his hat and his sword back? He left it behind and they grabbed it. <laughs> um, he's a wizard. Snapped. <laughs> back. Now, this is the first, at least of the Hobbit movies, where it felt like they trimmed a lot out. That's yeah, gonna I, That's gonna end up in the... Extended edition. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse you... me. The, the first one that really hit me is... So, Gandalf leaves. His staff was destroyed yeah. in a Desolation of Smog. Mm-hmm. And he basically gets Radagast's staff mm-hmm. um, from then on out, which is what we see in Lord of the Rings. But you never really see that moment where Radagast is like, here, you, you might need this. And, you know, like, tosses it to him and he catches it. And, they, you know, they <laughs> wink at each other and give, him, give, them a, give each other a high five. No, Which has I to, feel we're going to see in the extended edition. It has, to be, it has edition. to be the kind of high five that um, Arnold and Carl Weathers had in Predator. The, and then they just start and flexing. And they flex, yeah. You've been pushing too many pencils. I've got rabbits. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just get to a really big rabbit. I got a giant hedgehog. Give me one of those big enough to ride. I've Thor, a, anyone? Thor. I've got a big blue. I've got a big blue box. <laughs> Whoa! So you know that's the last we see of, of that, and then Gandalf all, all of a sudden shows you know, up with his uh, new fucking staff. I know like, that um, I don't know. 
And I guess I'm just being nitpicky. No, no, I know you're one. No, you're right because there's a scene at the end that that really threw me. Mm-hmm. It's you know, it's the uh, I'm not gonna say exactly what happens. So I'll probably bring it up again when it comes up. But the scene between um, Legolas and his dad. Mm. There's. I hate that fucking scene. Yeah, but you wanna know? What I I find it odd because there's there's got to be something missing from that one yeah. line he says. Yeah, I just feel I just feel like there's a lot missing in this movie that I that I want to see. So th- this is like the first of the Hobbit movies where I'm really looking forward yeah. to the extended edition. Because even though I even though I really liked Unexpected Journey and I I liked for the most part Desolation of, Desolation of Smog. I wasn't Smog. Yes, Smog. Smog. Excuse me. <laughs> no, you're pronouncing I, I what's wrong with you tonight. I've been I've been fighting off a cold all week, so I've been. No, my it's throat's a, it's, just it's, congested. It's a very rare form of cold where you mispronounce smog as smog. Yes, yes. It's, you're the, both it's been, the worst type. You're both been pronouncing it incorrectly. It's pronounced Richard. My mistake. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. No, I, I have to mention... Santa Claus! When it comes to, to his portrayal of Bali. Now, when I, I grew up... When I finished reading The Hobbit, my favorite character was Bali. Always was him. Mm. Because yeah, he was always nice to Bilbo, who actually <laughs> talked to him, and you know treated him like he was an no. equal. Yeah, he's also one of the few characters and dwarves in the book that gets more character development other than yeah. Thorin. And, and, no, yeah. and of course, it, it broke my heart where when I read Lord of the Rings, where it turned out that he was the Lord of Moria, and mm-hmm. it turned out he was killed. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's not the grave him. they find when you watch the movies. That's the grave they find. And apparently, the one who has the book in his hand. Is um, one of the other dwarves in the company. And it's, it's I can't not, remember which Gimli's one. Though. Father, though. It's not Gimli's father. No. It's, it's not that one. It's not Gimli. It's not Bomber. It's, not... <laughs> it's the one with like the monk haircut and the. Bofer. Oh, with Bofer? Is it Bofer? You I mean can't... the one who looks like George Harrison? Wait, wait, God, the boy, oh, no, you meant the one with the monk. I thought you were talking about the hat he was wearing with the. No, no, not not the uh, not the big mustache guy. Because that's Bofer. The really young one with the slingshot. Oh, I, that's like uh, um, Bing Bong. Bing Bong. <laughs> yeah. No, what are the names? Okay. Um, there's okay. Okay. Here's, there's, here's, here's the test. Okay. Name all the dwarves. Okay, David, I go. got it. Okay. Okay. Um, there's Thorn Oakenshield. Mm. There's Balin, Dwalin, Bofer, Biffer, Bomber, uh, Nori, Ori, Dory, Feely, Keely, Gloin, Oin. There you go. So, okay, it so was, which one was it? Which one was it? I don't remember. It was like... It, oh, it's either Dory, Nori, or Ori. Yeah, it's, it's one, one of those, those three. three. Yeah. I just don't remember Huey, which. Because there's so Dewey, fucking many. Louie, <laughs> Peter, Paul, John, Ringo. Ringo's my favorite dwarf. <laughs> he's the underrated dwarf. <laughs> um, let's see, then there's... And I'm pretty um, sure he's the one that's going to live the longest. <laughs> then there's Mick... And Keith, <laughs> then there's um, Robbie, then there's um, Jackie, Marlin, Jermaine, Randy, <laughs> Tito, Marlin. Jesus. This is a nice scene between Bilbo and Thorin right here. I like yeah. this a lot. Even though Thorin's slowly going crazy. Well, and that's another thing I want to point out. How could Richard... Is it Armitage? Is that how you pronounce it? Armitage. 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 Like Armitage. You say, uh, you say <laughs> Armitage. I say Armitage. Tomato, tomato. Anyway, yeah, no, he's really no, good. He's like also really good. Because when he was cast, I mean, I admit I was kind of disappointed in it because Thorne is one of the big roles. I was expecting, like, you know, more of, like, a name actor, right? And it's like, who's this guy? And I was like, so, a little apprehensive. Yeah, I mean, why couldn't it have been Stone Cold Steve Austin? That would have been interesting. <laughs> so, but when he was, I was... Where's really the Stone? What? Oh, God. <laughs> They get Hayden Christensen to play Thorn. Oh, man. Please, no. He's going to be in a Nicolas Cage movie coming up. Oh. Set in the Middle Ages. My oh. I can't, I can't oh. wait to see I can't remember oh. what it's called, but my okay. God, it Please looks awesome. Please tell me that Nicolas Cage is playing a fucking wizard. Please. No, I think he's playing some kind of like Templar Knight or something oh. like that. It's, it's called We'll Get Less Than 10% on Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> I'll rate it a fucking five-star movie. <laughs> God, I hate this character so much. Why? He's so fucking annoying. And he gets more annoying as the movie goes on, which is even worse. I think he gets sexier as the movie <laughs> goes on, especially in his last... I just realized he looks like Vince Russo. Too bad he doesn't sound like it. <laughs> it would be pretty funny, though. That is the worst person named Alfred ever. <laughs> Alfred. 
So they're at Hell's <coughs> Deep right now? No, Dale. Dun dun dun. <laughs> I promise I've read those books. I no, you're Lord of the Rings movies, David. Jeez. Oh, Reading the picture books doesn't count. <laughs> I do. I have to. You're wait, such a casual, I, David. Ugh. Fucking casual. <laughs> Go back and bring your angry birds. <laughs> uh, when it comes, I have to mention when it comes to the design of the the dwarves, because in the Hobbit they were pretty much described wearing different colored hoods and such, and that's mm -hmm. why, like in these films, is that you may not know each of their names, but you know just what by they looking look like. at them. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're very distinctive. They each have their own kind of character traits and and look and whatnot. Which no, they did a really good job the developing. The look of everything. And um, the in the extended editions, you find out that the colors of their cloaks have been taken down to their pubic hair. Yeah. So <laughs> now they have blue pubic hair, green pubic and, hair. And he's not kidding, because there is, to those who haven't seen the extended edition of the first Hobbit film, there is a nude scene of all the dwarves. So. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it's good. <laughs> now, the other thing I, I mentioned when it came to liking these movies, or particularly the first one, I remember discussing this with Nathan, and that is... Nathan and I both agree, we love us some Gimli. Mm. Love, love Gimli. That's, That's one of the reasons I really like Unexpected Journey so much, yes. is that everything that I loved about the Lord of the Rings movies throughout them is all kind of packed into one movie. Yes. It's all about the dwarves. There's a lot of it taking place in the Shire, which I really liked, and Fellowship of the Ring. Yeah. There's just a lot of stuff like that where I'm like, everything I loved mm. in Lord of the Rings is packed into this one movie. It's great. Yeah, and, and so essentially what we came up with is this, is this, if you liked Gimli or really liked Gimli's, what, just him, you're going to mm. really like The Hobbit because of all the dwarves. That's it, that's another reason I was so hyped, hyped up to see this particular movie, the third one, mm -hmm. is because I remember in watching Return of the King and thinking, God, why don't they just get... You know, go to the mountains and get some of the dwarf armies. Like, could you imagine, like, 500 Gimli's running around just slaughtering the shit out of orcs with axe, axes and shit? And I was like, that's gonna be awesome. And then when I, when this movie's coming out, I'm like, yes, I finally get to see that. 10, 15 years later. Can't wait. And then it was, it was, all right. Or, it wasn't bad. Because you built it up too much in your head. I did. I did. I really did. Or, or for me, it's like I'd play the living hell out of the, the two Lord of the Rings games that I had on GameCube. <laughs> Yeah, those and are good games. Is that Two Towers and Return of the yeah, King? Those yes. Are good games. Those are I, really I good still, games. Especially I, Return of the King is and great. I, and I still own them, and you know, one day I'll bust them out we can play because they're oh, two-player Oh, I still own players. Return of the King for yep. PS2. Yeah. It's, oh, it's great. And they are two-player games. Well, the at least the, the last one The is. Third Age game is good, but man, is it tedious. I still need to try Shadows of Mordor. But I'm not going to do that until yeah. I get a PS4. No. I have it, but I haven't played it. On PlayStation 3? <laughs> but, On PlayStation 3, yeah. But basically what I was getting at is I would play the living hell out of two characters. Gandalf and Gimli. Especially Gimli. Because he had that, oh, yeah. one, that finishing blow with his axe where he just swing it. He's swinging knock, around a couple times and then boom, yes, right on the ground. He knocked the hell out of everybody in their way. I love playing as Gimli, although the more times I played as Legolas... I think he was the best character. This is like the first. This is because um, you could shoot like three arrows at once, yeah. and then you would slice oh, people yeah. up really quick. Correct yeah. me if I'm wrong, because I don't necessarily remember from the books, but um, <laughs> this feels like the first time that they're really portraying the elves as assholes. Just these particular elves. Yeah, but I don't like even, I don't the remember, woodland elves or whatever. But I don't remember that so much from the book. Now here's a callback to a scene that's in the extended edition of Unexpected Journey. Yeah. But really has no place in here. This movie, if you haven't no, seen no, the extended no, editions with no, all the, no, the jewels no, no, and wait, stuff. Hold on. In, um, in Des Desolation of Smaug, he tries to make a deal with Thorin, get me those gemstones back, and those are the does ones he? he's talking about. Yes, yeah, no, that is in that one, but... Yeah, it's in Desolation of Smaug. Yeah, but uh, but do, see, they make them, do they show the gems, though? They describe them, though. Yeah, but it makes sense if it was in the first film, so that way you but, see uh, it but, happen. Uh, but they are mentioned before. Oh, I know, but I... In that case, I'm actually kind of glad I've seen only extended editions of, of Destiny Doesn't Smaug, and I don't remember in the first theatrical version of um, Unexpected Journey, I don't remember not seeing the gems. Yeah, in the extended one, there's a clear scene where okay. they're doing all the, the backstory. Yeah, and, then, I'm, then I'm glad yeah. it was there. Makes, makes more happy. Can I tell you how much I love it whenever I watch any of the, the Lord of the Rings films, Middle-earth films that Peter Jackson does? I always love the usage of snow whenever he cuts to it. I always do. I'm a, I'm a sucker for that. So naturally, whenever I watch Game of Thrones, I'm like, yeah, we're going to get us some snow tonight. I like the scene but when they when they go and talk uh, through the wall. This is a good scene. 
Ooh, snap. One point for Bard. <coughs> Asshole. <laughs> He played a Nazi in uh, Captain America. Which one? Uh, the the first Captain America, where who oh, sabotages no, uh, no, the lab? Was it him? Was it the Bard? R oh, Richard Armitage. Yeah. Did I just call him the Bard? I just called him Shakespeare. That's well, that actually. He does, this he actually, does, he does this kind of look like uh, Joseph Fiennes in Shakespeare yes. in Love. I Come say. forth, Sally Ho, and present the Sally Fall. <laughs> Sally Fall. <laughs> Sally. <laughs> I can see you! Welcome to Dwarf Burger. Can I take your order? <laughs> Hi. To the people of Lake Town, I ask that you honor your pledge. Would you like that super size, sir? <laughs> I do like this, though. It's like a nice little... Even if they're closer, they're still at a distance. You gotta that's, have that 3D. Look, man. It's gotta be down. Look, man, but, but that's <laughs> look, man this, wall, this wall oh, is way yeah. too thick for a glory hole, dude. I mean, I have... Uh, <laughs> Maybe for you. We're gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna bring this up when it comes to George Lucas and his usage of <clears throat> staging and what have you. I mean, this is what separates people like that, and that is Peter Jackson knows when it comes to staging or editing. Or, here's the thing, like, Cameron, could you at least give me this when it comes to James Cameron? Because I know you're not a big fan of Avatar, but at least he knows how to oh, yeah, stage. Yeah, he, knows that, he knows how to yeah. shoot, and he knows that. And um, he, like most good directors, knows that you don't have to ha open every scene with a couch where people are sitting down, getting up, packing something, <laughs> then sitting back down. Do you think that the Hobbit Battle of Five Armies would have been better if they called it the Unobtainable Stone? <laughs> Or was that would be too on the nose? I think it might be a little too on the nose. How about the Hobbit? It's a good thing James Cameron did not direct these movies. The Hobbit greed is bad. <laughs> that, actually, that's the one thing I remember some people really getting snarky about. They're like, they said these films are about how greed is bad, and yet they split them into three movies, and they're making so much money <laughs> off of them. It's and, all so and ironic. And action figures. And yeah. blah, 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 blah. Just shut up and shovel popcorn in your mouth. Enjoy yourself. But that's, that seems to be really a main theme just in this particular movie, not really with... That's a great shot. God, yeah. I love that shot. It's beautiful. Like, uh, but yeah, this whole kind of movie as a whole is about kind of greed and fighting over gold. And uh, But the other two movies, eh, not so much. No, the first the one other two movies was. are just kind of a happy well, little adventure going off. The, the first one was a little bit at the beginning <coughs> where they talk about his father. And then the second one... I'm no, sorry, his uh, grandfather. And now, then, that's, that's something I wanted to bring up because... When I first saw that movie, I, because I, I, I learned that his grandfather or father or whatever got one of the rings of power that the dwarfs have. So I thought, yeah. oh my god, he's turning insane because he has this ring of power, yeah. and it's changing, and it's you know changing his brain and whatnot. Right. Um. So I thought the the ring of power had something. Mm -hmm. The dwarf ring of power had something to do with that. <laughs> but apparently, they just go crazy over gold. And that kind of confused me a little bit. Instead, they, he, he just shows up and he loves gold and he slowly becomes insane. Do they call it dragon sickness? Yes. Yeah, they call yeah. it dragon sickness. I just imagine Which is fine, but I'd rather have just a little more of a connection with Sauron and the ring and the rings and all that. Well, weren't the, that's just well, weren't the dwarf lord rings missing? Or the all gone missing? There's yeah. a, there, well, there's another extended scene in Desolation of Smaug. <laughs> Um, which is a, which is a scene I can't believe they took out is with all the stuff with Gandalf and Thorin's father, Having and how sex. they cut off his finger and stole the the dwarf ring. Wait, 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 wait! Because I didn't see that theatrically. So there are no in the. He's not in it at all. At all, not yeah. at all. His, so there's father, a lot of the, yeah, they cut his father completely, completely out. Completely out. Why? Yeah. I do not know. Because those scenes are great. Yeah, it's okay. And it's and it makes all the uh, it makes because they they kept a lot of the same action stuff and just digitally removed him. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh god. Um, but yeah, all that stuff was great. It made all the action and what Gandalf was doing a lot more interesting. And they just completely cut it out. Okay, I, I don't know why. I have a question for you then. He wants to fuck his sword. When um That's when gross. It, when it came to the theatrical and extended the bit where um the the. The king of Lake Town, the master of Lake Town, mm -hmm. what have you. When he's eating the sheep balls, the ram balls, is that in the theatrical version? Oh, mm -hmm. God. I I want to say yes, but no. I can't remember for it sure. Wasn't? I don't no. remember. Okay, because if they kept that, but they didn't keep anything with his dad, it'd be like, you're supposed to show it because it's this continuing he progression of, okay, his grandfather went insane, his father went insane. It The sins, because that's one of the themes of 
you know, this film, but all of these series of films, but also in The Lord of the Rings, and that is the fear that the sins of the fathers will come back to haunt the children. In this case, you know, in Lord of the Rings, it's Aragorn afraid that Isildur's influence will, you know, weigh on him and will have him corrupt himself and take over the ring. Uh, uh, Boromir and his father, Denethor. Faramir and his father, Denethor. In this film, it's uh, Thorin and his father, his father and his grandfather. And Joseph begot Egot, and Egot <laughs> begat. <laughs> and Thomas begat Bruce, Bruce begat Damien. This is a great scene right here. I was, uh, doing, a, I was doing a shoot last night with uh, the great Chanson Bender. Chanson's mm -hmm. great cinematographer. He's, He's really good. No, he was, uh, he was the DP. Chanson, you should be on one episode. But I was, uh, I, I was saying that we were going to do a commentary on this movie, and I said, yeah, was, there's a lot of good things to talk about. There's a lot of bad things to talk about. And he said, no, no, there was only one good thing to talk about. He said, there's only one good thing in this entire movie, and he said it was this scene right here. And it's definitely one of the best scenes of the movie. It's great. He said, it's just, let two actors act, it looks beautiful, and then when they kind of part Aww. and all the dwarves are kind of coming between them. He said like, yeah, that's cinema. I love that scene. The rest of it was shit. <laughs> I was like, but okay, the, fair enough. But everything else is cinema too. Oh, who was the name of that one guy? And back in 2012 when we were watching the Lord of the Rings ones, who was that kind of grumpy guy who was like, Peter Jackson isn't a director. He doesn't know how to make films. And I don't know. Who was that guy? I don't know. I don't, I don't remember. <laughs> I, it was like, I was, I was well, sitting What did he there, look like? He kind of looked like if Chris Russell, well, our friend Chris, was smaller didn't have a beard, no? He kind of looked like Chris... He could have been a relative of Chris Russell's. <laughs> I don't know. You know, but I mean, I just sat there going, you know, I know you seem like a pretty cool guy and all, but good lord. He's got three freaking Oscars on his shelf. He's made billions of dollars making these movies. He knows how to make a film. You're telling me he doesn't know how to make movies? He, know, he knows how to make a movie. He, he needs to get better at condensing movies. Like, it's, it's like, um... <laughs> It's, I, I think uh, Mike and Jay from uh, Red Letter Media said it best, you know, because uh, someone uh, they were it was on one of the uh, one of the shows they did where one of their friends said um, they had never wanted to watch the Hobbit movies because it looked terrible, and they both jumped in. No, 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 you don't, no, no. The movies aren't bad; they're just really, really long. Peter Jackson never forgot how to make a movie. Oh yeah, yeah. This is great. This is the best part of the scene. Oh, he's going nuts. I actually expect him at some point to go with my precious. <laughs> He's sounding like... I like that. They, they mixed with Benedict Cumberbatch's mm -hmm. voice. That's really good. That's really good. That's really good sound. Yeah, look at this. That's beautiful. Yeah. I love that. Them walking by. This is the... I remember this All that armor is so fucking awesome. God, I love the... The, I, the whole dwarf culture, I think, is I think is great. I'm God, so glad... Why don't you become a dwarf? <laughs> well, we I would if I dwarfs. could. Holy shit, I um, would if the, I could. The one thing is, like, this film was nominated for only one Oscar, and that was for Best Sound Editing. And that's... It's a shame. Which is surprising, because look at the visual effects, and the cinematography is great. And the, the, and art, the, the art direction. The music is really good. The song at the end that oh, Billy Boyd does is great. End, yeah. Angmar. Yeah. The Witch oh, well. King of Angmar. See, I, I feel King like there's the more to this stuff that they've cut out. I just... The Witch I don't know, King I can't is, put my um, finger on it. The Witch King is the ancestor of uh, Aragorn, right? Oh, God. Is he? I don't know. Because I, I know that he's related to some to one of the corrupted kings. Yeah. Let's get Stephen Colbert on the phone. He'll, he'll yeah. tell us. Give me Stephen on the phone! <laughs> Mm, now, I miss Lost. Now, speaking of, like, now she used to date Dominic Monaghan, and this came out, uh, I think, about oh, yeah, a year or so ago, and Dominic said, oh, yeah, she cheated on me. <laughs> oh, really? That's yeah. depressing. And it caused a big Twitter war. Like, no, she did. Nah, not against Mary. Come on. Okay. Yeah, and he's like, well, you weren't there. How do you know? <laughs> it just reminds me of also all these... The, the, this one guy used to be a member of this boy band who went on Howard Stern and he talked about how he used to date Jennifer Love Hewitt and she had several boyfriends and she would cheat on them all at the same time. And it's like, I just think that's kind how of... How did we get crazy. talking about Jennifer Love Hewitt? Yeah. <laughs> well, somebody's got to talk to her. <laughs> talk about her. See, now he's got uh, no, nobody has to talk staff about her. Nobody from here ever. on out. And we have no, I, oh, do you remember when they mm. tried to make her into Audrey Hepburn? What? See, that's why nobody ever has <laughs> to talk about her. Nobody does. Please just punch him in the fucking face. It's Black Adder. 
I mean, I mean, he is kind of black at her. No, so. but seriously, if uh, would you like that role better if it was Rowan Atkinson? <clears throat> yes, and, and he was a sen- only because it's Rowan Atkinson. I would still find the character annoying, though. And what if he just played as, as essentially he was black at her? Oh, it would have been good. What if he played it straight, like, I could like, that. like? Uh, excuse me, but we have no room here for tramps or beggars or whatever. You know? Then he has bald Rick by his side. <laughs> I'll take care of the wizard, Mister B. Oh, can I mention the pace? And that is, I'm a huge fan of Pushing Daisies. I love that show. I'm I can, a huge, I'm a huge I can fan. never get into it. it was I'm such, a huge was, fan of Pace Picante sauce. <laughs> and it was such a it was such a pity that this. Show I get was, my salsa from New York City. <laughs> oh jeez. Nico <laughs> Bear. And what else? And does anyone know the answer? What other film was Lee Pace in that was released this very same year? It was a uh, temple. Dracula. Oh, Guardians of the Dracula. Galaxy. And who was he? He was uh, the bad guy. What? He was, Oh, yeah, I'll get you, I'm getting confused. He was, uh, I thought you were talking about the guy who plays the bar, who oh, plays no, no, bar. Lee Pace. Oh, no. And he was in uh, Dracula Untold. Oh, oh yeah. No. yeah. Wait, Lee Pace. Is that movie any good? Did you see it? I didn't see it, but... Ronan! The but accuser. A, yeah, he, God, that's the only bad part of Guardians of the Galaxy. I love him. What, Ronan? I, uh, Ronan, because he... he I okay, fine. Here's my, okay, here's my reasoning why. Um, we know, we learn a lot about, um, we learn a lot about all the Guardians... But at the end of the day, we don't know anything about uh, Ronan, and that would be fine if there was just more there. Like, when you watch the original Star Wars movie, you mm-hmm. learn a lot about Luke, a lot about Leia, a lot about Han, and you barely scratch the surface of, the surface of Darth Vader, <coughs> but he does so much badass stuff mm-hmm. that you're like, oh, he's just cool. Ronan doesn't get that opportunity. It's not that he's bad, he's just... He's just kind of there. Yeah, but oh. you can, with, with everything else in the movie is Where so over the top and ridiculous yeah. in a good way. Oh. That with the villain being kind of run of the mill, mm. typical kind of bad guy villain, I don't mind it. I've got it because everything it. else is so out there. This is what he is. He is the party pooper. Mm, That's who he is. He's, he's the party pooper. good at it. I think he is. It was like, oh, I wrote it. And then I like it just because the one line he has at the end where he just goes, What are you doing? Yeah, what are you <laughs> doing? I love when he says it the first time. It's yeah. just, oh, it's perfect. Oh, they're. I remember this. There's a trailer <laughs> moment. For war. War. Everyone, dun, dun, everyone has to dun, talk dun, like this because it's an action dun, movie. Dun, 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 we got our feeling shot. I the orc, the orcs look so different in this movie. I think the other thing that might hinder this, as opposed to Lord of the Rings, is that it, the villains in the Lord of the Rings films were actors. Were, well, no, no, just actors. I mean, we're just we're better. I mean, it was like I mean, you got Chris really as Saruman, that's really good. But Brad Dourif as Wormtongue, also really good. Or even some of the, oh God, the orc that played uh, Gothmog. That mm-hmm. was his name. That's a really. The one who had like uh, what was it tumors over the his body? The cauliflower yeah. face. <laughs> yeah, that was a that's a good villain. Or even just how the witch kings were built up, or even the 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 mouth of Sauron. That's also really good too. That's a scene that I. Uh, that's another thing, especially with Return of the King. I'm not a huge fan of Return of the King. It's my least favorite of the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Um. But yeah, when you watch the extended edition, even though it's four fucking hours, it is there's, a, there's a lot of scenes that they cut out where I'm like, they should have kept, what, it they should have kept that in and t- taken out other stuff. Yeah. Because there's a lot of things they cut yeah. out where I'm like, this is great, this explains yeah. more, <laughs> makes it more interesting, but... Then there's a yeah, whole thing whatever. with a Saruman that cut out everything. Yeah, that was... Oh yeah, I know, that's what really pissed me off. Yeah. It's like, like, we've been with this character, you know, all this time, and then all of a sudden, eh, just leave him up there, he'll be fine. And that's the last we get of him. That's bullshit. And as for me, I love me some Lord of the Rings. It's one of those where it's like, <laughs> if I had to be pressed to choose, mm-hmm. it's very hard for me to pick my favorite of the the three films because they're it's, just. It's they're easy just... for me. Fellowship. Mm-hmm. I think Fellowship's the best one of all these yeah. six movies. Now, do you I think that when, uh, when Jackson won the won the big gold paperweight, uh, that he aw. essentially you've known my feelings on the Oscars for years, <laughs> and they they are nothing but a golden naked dude paperweight. But do you think that he was kind of awarded that overall for all Lord of the Rings? Yes, like... and I think he deserved it. I, I, even, well, even, actually, even though Return of the King is my least favorite, I believe he deserved Best Director because of the all challenge. the because because of the immensity of doing them all at the same time, and as a yeah. whole, he deserved a Best Director. But, but also, because, gonna, oh. but I'd also say, <laughs> but I'd also say because of 
the, the competition that year. And that's not to take away from anybody else who was nominated or who wasn't nominated. And that was, he did deserve it of those nominees. And I just love it when you watch Peter Jackson win Best Director. You take a look, you see Annie Lennox in the background lose her shit. Just how happy she is. Then you see Clint Eastwood just sit there and he's got this look on his face like, I lost to this movie. <laughs> Because he had this... Then this, he yelled at a chair yeah. the rest of the night. And that's, and that's what made me upset when it came to Clint Eastwood. Where he's like, well, with Mystic River, this is a film about his stories, not just visual effects. Wasn't that the movie that made you hate Emmy Rossum? Oh, no, 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 no. I don't hate <laughs> Emmy Rossum. You used to do this great impression oh, of Phantom of the, uh, No, it's Phantom of the Opera that's pretty bad. Where it's like, it's like just just imagine like this still face of her. It's like, <laughs> Emmy Rossum, happy. Emmy Rossum, sad. Emmy Rossum, you should, yeah. you should watch her on Shameless. She's like, oh, no, she's, she's good. She's amazing yeah, on Shameless. Yeah, she's good, but that entire show is awesome. No, if we ever get to the, to the musical Phantom of the Opera, which I kind of don't want to get that's to that movie. Please don't get yeah. to the Phantom okay, of the see, Opera. David, that's the perfect example of a nuclear option. A movie that's so <laughs> bad, you don't want to watch it, well, even but then, you're willing I, to do it I to think fuck you with just gave, I think you just gave him his nuclear mm -hmm. option. Well, even then, it's not that film that makes me go, Grr! But it's just with that film, it, it, I, I'm more annoyed. But anyways, we're watching a better film. And that is Bilbo decided to essentially betray, during the bunny years here, Thorin, and give the Arkenstone mm -hmm. to B Bacardi and Cola. What the? Bacardi and Cola? What? They get what? the job done. <laughs> Bacardi and Diet Cola. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'd like to see Peter Jackson do? Like a full-on return to horror. He said that he wants to do. He, he said he wants to do more smaller films, which I hope he does. It's it's. And you know, what, and I want to see him do a movie with absolutely no CGI. And the, th the thing is, I think that. Would be I think is, I actually think he will do that because, unlike another guy who did a prequel trilogy, mm, who said he, who said he wanted to do smaller films when the prequel trilogy was done, and then never did, never did. Yeah. Well, he made one, and it was awful. Mm -hmm. And he <laughs> and he technically didn't even direct. Yeah, exactly. Technically. Even though he's all over that movie. Yeah. You, can, you can just see it. You can feel it. But I honestly do believe Peter Jackson will get to it. Who knows? Maybe, I, mean, I know it's a long stretch. He probably wants to do something original, but who knows? Maybe we'll get Dead Alive too. <laughs> <laughs> that would be awesome. By the way, Dead Alive, in case you're wondering, is the movie that did the zombie baby thing first and best. <laughs> and I'm not one of those... So is this the beginning of the battle? Um, Essentially. Yeah. And when I say that, get into it. and when I say that, I want to stress: I'm not somebody who blindly hates Zack Snyder. I just Zack think, Snyder. I just think Peter Jackson. You um, mean Hack like, Snyder? Oh, get the fuck out of here right now! <laughs> oh, actually, there's one little cool thing here: is that if you uh, look at when it gets to Gloin, he's wearing Gimli's helmet. He's wearing yeah. Gimli's helmet. That's a nice touch. Batman, there's great Batman, little touches like that. that when Batman so good. versus Superman comes out, you're gonna get a boner and love it and say you were wrong. <laughs> I will only get a boner for Dude, Ben Affleck in that movie. When it comes to the design, I have of that, no doubt I will hate everything else. Uh, no, you will love everything but else. But I have no doubt Ben Affleck will be great in that movie. Oh, that's not very kind. When it comes to the design of that elk, do I, does anyone else get like a Miyazaki vibe from it, like Princess Mononoke? Just yeah, a little bit. bit. I can the, see that. See, the, maybe this is just uh, from my thing, but I got more of a um, like Mobius kind of feel. The art, French artist Mobius. Oh, I think he was yes. French, yeah. At least I think he was French. <laughs> you wacky elves. And in a really, <laughs> really weird way, just because the way it looks, and might be because we've been talking about it for a while, I almost get like almost a Ralph McQuarrie, McQuarrie vibe from Oh, that's a good point. And yeah. to quickly, to create a quick side, I'm also really happy that they're going to the, the new Star Wars film, that they're going back to Ralph McQuarrie's designs to... <laughs> I really do like that. I am. Uh oh! Oh, he's got an ace up his sleeve. <laughs> I kind of <laughs> like that crown. That's pretty the, cool. But the thing is, right now, with the fur and the gold crown, he <laughs> look. Thorin looks like he's the lead singer of an '80s metal band. <laughs> I was gonna say he looks. Are like... Are you ready to rock, Dale? <laughs> I was gonna say he looks like a young Odin. I said, Are you ready to rock? <laughs> All of their guitars look just oh, like the axes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and of, course, the, and of course, bomb bombers on the drums. Yeah, of course. All right, that that does it. We're gonna start our own dwarf heavy metal band. <laughs> I said, do you want to get rocked? This one's called "Pull Some Ockenstone on Me." 
<laughs> you son of a Ooh. bitch. I just realized that my grandma has a robe that looks like that. <laughs> yep, see, there's yep, the... See, it's there's beautiful. Helmet. All the other helmets even, look he kind of like, ridiculous, you know, but he, that one looks great. Actually, it is Gimli. Dun, dun, dun. Time for Plot twist. I like Bomber's <laughs> I love his mustache coming out of there. That's great. Uh, see, little things like that. I want to, I wanna, you know, have more moments, you know, with these dwarves. The, the last two movies... Did a did a pretty good job of giving every dwarf oh, shit. like their own special little moment throughout the movie. They don't get to do anything, kind of to feature themselves. But with this movie, so many of them are just kind of tossed along the wayside. But nobody should really toss to a dwarf. On. You don't toss a dwarf. Don't exactly. tell anybody. Never toss a dwarf. And th with this movie, the, really the only ones you focus on are Thorin, Balin, and Feely and Keely, and then the rest are just kind of eh, whatever. Well, in a way, it kind of has to be. Which is sad, because really... I really like a lot of the stuff they did with the, yeah, we'll, the other dwarves. We'll probably but... do that in an extended edition. Yeah, happened? exactly. That's another reason why I really look forward to the extended I mean, edition that... of this one more so than any of the others. Yeah. I mean, that's why I kind of like do that. I just focus on just the extended edition ones. That... You meanie. Oh, they all love Bilbo. We all love Bilbo. We, we wish Bilbo was our king! <laughs> Yeah, it's interesting the kind of the things they did in order to get Martin Freeman because they liked him so much. They agreed to um, uh, let him leave for a couple of months to go film the new season of Sherlock. You know, they did all these kind of things to work around his work schedule because they wanted him in this movie so bad. I mean, and he, I can't, I can't fault him because he's fucking great. He, as Bilbo. he was a fan pick because I remember when they're like, "Oh, they're gonna do a Hobbit film." I always heard Martin Freeman. It, he was always like the fan pick. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I forgot that. His name's Luke Evans, right? Mm -hmm. He's going to yes. be in the Beauty and the Beast remake. Yeah. Oh, as and, the Beast? Um, and as, as Gaston. And oh, technically, okay. since he was in Dracula Untold, which I haven't seen, and I've heard nothing but bad things about, <laughs> which means I kind of want to see it now, but um, that was apparently the start of Universal's monster universe. Oh, God. Are you serious? Yeah. But see, here's the, th here's the thing. It's another trailer moment. It's annoying. Whoa. It's annoying that, the, that yet another um, studio was trying to do a cinematic universe, but technically, Universal Monsters could be considered the original. Oh, movie. yeah. They, they always have those kind of crossover stuff. So it doesn't but. bother me that much. Yay, Dwarf but Army! What, what bugs me is they're not going to be horror films. They're going to be more yeah. action films, and then I'm not yeah. interested. You meaty dwarfs. Just like I don't think we need a Ghostbusters yeah. movie universe. Oh god, that's so fucking stupid. And coming right oh, on Lord. a big ass pig. I can't believe it took him so long to play a dwarf, ladies and gentlemen. The great, the wonderful Billy Connolly. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember he was interviewed about. It. He's like, he thought all oh, the Hobbit film. He was like, did he like him? He's like, no. He didn't like any of that. He wanted to punch people who would talk anything about it, so he'd probably <laughs> smack the shit out of us, but... Why did he hate him? <clears throat> he just couldn't get into it. I love how the pig has armor. Yeah. It's great. <laughs> he doesn't even have to change his voice at all. He's just like, Billy Connolly, just be yourself, and we're just going to put you in a bunch of makeup. Perfect. And also, I don't think there are any other Scottish dwarves. <laughs> Now, I'm pretty sure there's CGI in his mouth. I thought he was all CGI, honestly. I know, it's, it's kind of hard to tell. But something's definitely a little off. But he looks great. I yeah. love the design of him and everything. Giant fucking hammer and shit. That's great. I think he's mo-capped. So you gotta wait for the extended edition to get that nine-hour making-of documentary. <laughs> we'll finally no, know when all. You look, at his, look at his eyes, though, the way they move. Or rather, the eyebrows. Or maybe it's just how it was shot. Yeah, I don't know. It's, yeah. 
something's definitely off. It's it's distracting. Actually, he wasn't there. Actually, he wasn't there on, on a screen. Uh, he wasn't there on stage or any of the locations. But that also isn't CG. It's just an animatronic of Billy Connolly. <laughs> is that? Is it's he like really the Hall all... of Presidents at Disneyland. Yeah. <laughs> is he really all CGI? I don't know. He, he, I think he is. I genuinely huh. believe he is. Yeah, it's something's definitely off. It's. Just... Which is too bad because it's distracting, but you know, Billy Connolly's great. I love his voice. Because that guy's real? Yeah, yeah, clearly that guy's real. What if it turns out he was it, that it was real? We're just. That's just then I have to wonder what the fuck <laughs> makeup they put him in. Then, then you have to learn the truth, and that is Billy Connolly is a CGI creation mm-hmm. over 70 years in the making. Now, this was the most what the fuck moment Where of this entire film yeah. series. Dune! Like, where the fuck did these come from? Oh, don't you know that um, if you're bitten by a wereworm, you become a wereworm? Is, I, is that? I guess. That was your reaction. Oh, come on. Werewolf. Yeah, it's like, it th- doesn't even look like anything that, from that, any of the other movies. Like, unless I don't know. it's a Del Toro design. Maybe. It very well might be, but it's just, it feels is, so random. I don't remember the worms from the book either. Oh no! There's a lot of shit in these movies. Aren't so I must ask, who are the who are the five armies? <laughs> okay, because I, I I counted over and over again. I, I suddenly come up with four. I come up with the dwarves, okay. the orcs, mm-hmm. the elves, and the humans. The eagles are the fifth. I know. The, I guess they count as the. Right, well, well, there's the, there's the orc army coming in now, and then there's the other orc army that's coming in from the Witch King's castle well, that's with what the, I thought the bats too. and stuff. Because when, when I watched the cartoon, I always thought that the orcs were... I thought that the, that the, the, the armies were um, the Lake Town, the, all the dwarves, in, all the elves, and then it was the wargs in the, in and the, the orcs. Yeah, there's aren't there... Yeah, there's wargs and goblins in the book, isn't there? Yeah. And they just kind of did away with them here, so it's like... Or maybe that no the go, no god no the in this movie they're <coughs> goblin mercenaries but that is great that's a great idea right yeah. there. But what's coming up next is even better. You know you don't know that. Oh, about I know it. what you're talking about. I saw a clip of this. <laughs> <laughs> We're not talking about a nude scene. I like that. You know what? I think that, and, I have to admit. I think the oh, reason that's awesome. <laughs> I think the reason why this might be working better for me is, is like I did see very recently those those two films. So in a way, this does feel like a direct continuation of it. It kind of feels like you know with Game of Thrones, you sit and you watch it and you go, okay, yeah. next step. Oh, it, it works. It works oh, better yeah. when you watch it. You yeah. Know. You know what the orcs look Continuous like in their armor right now? It might just be me seeing this, but the gorilla soldiers from Planet of the Apes. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> they He's do. riding a piggy. Oh my god! Actually, and if I remember correctly, um, one of the things in, in the Hobbit was I don't think any of the he wrote anything about any of the dwarves using war hammers. That that's just a staple of like of, of mythology with dwarves that yeah. they use. I war thought it was more axes with dwarves. And you know, and the axes they talked about, yeah. But, and um, well, I love that they change it up a bit. And like they, the main people who use hammers are usually thunder gods. <laughs> But I do like that they are using hammers. Yeah, they, they use hammers, they use maces, they use swords. They have a, a wide variety of weapons, but they're still clearly, you know, dwarf-inspired, the way they design them so, and everything. Do you think Marvel would ever make a play for Peter Jackson to direct a Thor movie? Nah, I think he'd be like, no, uh, I'm done. Um, I, don't know if, a, I don't know if he would do it. Um, here's a check. Look at all those zeros. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I've always wanted to do a Thor movie. <laughs> okay, and these are are they mountain trolls? Yeah, yeah. See, mountain trolls I buy because because it looks very Lord of the Rings ish. We've seen them before. And those are on giant the- worms coming out of the ground. It's, it's, and the mountain trolls are actually wearing a Middle Earth proton packs. <laughs> <coughs> oh, poor dwarves. I mean, I did do like some research when it came to dwarves. Was that the the theory was like towards the end, like when it comes to the fourth age, that many of the dwarves were going extinct. That the idea was either dwarves weren't interested in having sex, or because there weren't there were like one third of a dwarf population are women, and it's one of those where they weren't interested in having sex with the women, and so they were going extinct. They'd rather kill people with axes than have sex. Yeah. <laughs> Yet the hobbits lived on. <laughs> <laughs> see, that's an, see, and that's another thing that I think Peter Jackson knows how to do, but Lucas is totally clueless on. How to make physical comedy work in your movie with serious battles. That actually made, and it made sense, because you gotta get them in there. 
Yeah, so go after the old man. You're 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 a tough. No, oh, no. Oh. <laughs> He's like a baby learning to walk. You know, I have to say this. It sucks being a citizen of Lake Town. First dragons. First you gotta face the dragons. <laughs> then you gotta face yeah, face the the trolls. Then you gotta face Lister as after he's had some vindaloo. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, exposition girl. They're gonna ruin the Captain Crunch. <laughs> let's get the hell out of here. Yeah. Like, let's get out of here. <laughs> Back in the hole. No. That's it, the back is all run. They've taken all my peaches, those lousy orcs. Now, why wasn't there a scene where any of the characters went to the bathroom, Cameron. Oh, is this like the reference to some idiots? Rex Reed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What was he talking about? They do again? show a toilet in Desolation yeah. of Smaug. Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> what was he talking? Oh, was that about? is. Never mind. Never mind. They the pop out of the what, toilet. What, and, yeah. what movie was he talking about again? He was actually talking about Star Wars Episode Three. He was like, "Why wasn't there a toilet?" You know, of all the of all the reasons to complain about that shitty movie. <laughs> A lack of toilet is not one of them unless you have a <laughs> scat fetish. Maybe. You know, these orcs seem to go down really easily. They're really big and they've got tons of armor, but they seem to... Yeah, see this little... <laughs> Don't you mean the gorilla soldiers? <laughs> oh, seriously, they look yeah, like the gorilla the... <laughs> soldiers. Like, if there was, like, a hint of purple in the, in the leather they're wearing, <laughs> it'd be a dead-on match. <laughs> And then they smile with the camera. Jeez. Okay, this scene looks like it should be great, but I'm not sold on it 100%. Yeah. Why is that? Watch when it comes up. Because I have to... I have to think it's... Oh, so, so that's what Nathan Jones has been up to. <laughs> He's surfing on the town. And see, I... He's, he's pulling a Kurt Russell from Escape from L.A. Wait, is this it? <laughs> yeah, and I'm not sold in that scene just because... Uh, I know really I know some of it had to be CGI in the end, but I don't know if as much of it needed to be yeah. CG. There's a lot of CG. down there and he dies. <laughs> Our town's already fucked up. Why are you destroying it even more? Maybe the dwarves let us crash with them. <laughs> It doesn't matter how you feel on the inside, just never come out. Now those two girls are actually the daughters of uh, Biffer, I believe. The guy with, The one with the big mustache. Yeah. I forgot the name of him, but... The actor's name? Yeah, but... I don't know oh, the yeah, man! I, I thought his name was Ian something or other. Ian Hinson? I don't know. Shit it, Granny. <laughs> Why is he in this movie? Because they wanted Grima Worm Tongue. Mm -hmm. It's like a poetry. Each, each stanza rhymes with the oh last God. one. <laughs> Except most of the stanzas actually do rhyme with each other. <laughs> okay, I can definitely see. All right, I have to tell you. This is just reminding me too much of the Lord of the Rings films because I'm, I'm getting Helm's Deep vibes. You know, they, when I was uh, watching the special, the basic special features for this uh, Blu-ray... They, they did a little thing where they were uh, kind of showing a lot of kind of images and, and you know, music cues. Oh, that's, cool. oh, that's awesome. And, <laughs> that's, that's even great. better. And, you know, a lot of kind of side-by-side uh, -side comparisons of, of the Lord of the Rings movies with the Hobbit movies and how they're all kind of interconnected. And it's really interesting that, you know, he, he, he does keep it all very similar, um, very consistent throughout all the, the six movies, which is good. There has to be a better way of saying that. <laughs> what? Black speech. Because I just want to say to everyone listening, we are watching with subtitles right now, so whenever the uh, orcs speak, it says what they're saying. It says in but, black speech, yeah. And there has to be a oh, better way to say that. the pig! There has to be a better way to say that. Like, I don't know, in Mordor yeah. or Mordorese. Mordish. They Mordish, there. 
in in the first three Lord of the Rings, they barely spoke black speech and stuff like that. But in these movies, they do it all the time, and it's kind of annoying. It's like just let them talk English. Like it's it's fine. We get it. They're evil. <laughs> so this is the sad part of the movie. The goth mog sequence where they're like, "Yep, we're they're all hitting the end of the second act where everything's going to shit." Yep, and that's when King Theoden shows up. <laughs> you no, know, despite his name, Goth Mog was actually far more into emo. Dun dun dun. <laughs> Whoosh. The hair is majestic. <laughs> hey, hey, hey! I get this. Uh, hey. No, you shall not pass, you whippersnappers. I like this actor a lot who plays a... Uh, Graham McTavish. Uh, Graham McTavish, yeah. So Scottish. He's a good actor. I like him a lot. I want to see him in more things. I think he like does... Like bedroom? Like my bedroom. Video but games. those forearms? Mm. Like, yeah, mm-hmm. I know he's in Uncharted. At least I think he was in Uncharted 3. He was, he was in both. He played the main villain in Uncharted 2. Oh, cool. And the sidekick guy in Uncharted 3. So I, he, he does a lot of voiceover He's work. Sully? And stuff. Not no, not Sully. The the bald guy. Um, Lex Luthor. Charlie something. Cutter. Charlie. He plays Charlie, Charlie Cutter Chan. in uh, in Charlie Uncharted Day. Three. But he does a lot. I think he does a lot of voiceover work and stuff. But I want to see him in Charlie more Bucket. movies like this. Yes, Charlie Bucket. Graham McTavish is Charlie Bucket. <laughs> I like to see that version of Charlie Chocolate Factory. It's like, like hello there, child. Do you like this chocolate factory? Here's another example. This is the, really the only scene that his character gets in this movie, and the rest of the movie is just kind of... In the other two movies, he gets a lot of, you know, nice little moments, but for this movie, it's just this, and he's just tossed aside with the rest of them for the rest of it. <laughs> Whatever. Do not speak to me. Okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna have a cry. What have I done, sweet Jesus? What have I done? <laughs> and then you turned insane. Actually, he's not even insane right now. I think he's drunk. <laughs> I, I'm your king. <laughs> you do, I, I tell you. you. I'm the king. Woo! <laughs> How, I, this is gonna be me at your bachelor party, isn't it, Nathan? No, I'm, <laughs> no this what? guy's the king. Let's go swimming in the gold. So you're saying at Nathan's bachelor party, you're gonna be exactly the same way you were at yours? <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, 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 now, uh, in my opinion, I want to go to the chocolate store. <laughs> I want to go to the chocolate it's, store. It's closed, David. Ah, uh, this, uh, this is my favorite scene in the whole movie. I love this scene. This is great. Oh, that's really cool. I know, it's great. It's something that's brought back from yeah. Desolation of Smog. Now, now the cold's hardened now. But uh, him just completely losing his fucking mind. The scene is great. And him kind of realizing that he's losing his mind. It was called Hulkamania. (laughs) Take back Endor as well. (laughs) You know, that's what this movie really needs. Yub Nub. (laughs) That's what every movie really needs when it comes down to it. Especially Schindler's List at the end. I, I'm not even lying. I'd like Yub Nub to me is one of like the musical highlights of Return of the Jedi. I <laughs> fucking love Yub Nub, and it's a sin, <laughs> a goddamn sin that it, that Lucas took it out for the special editions. Oh, this is I cool. fucking love Yub. Oh, Nub. that's really cool. I like I that. Know, isn't that great? The uh, image of the, I like that. No, uh, I just imagine that in 3D though. Oh, oh, it looked great in 3D. Oh, yeah. See, all you need to do to cure your madness is have a really bad hallucination. <laughs> then you're cured. Did you take some bad shrooms, Thorin? I think. I think back then. I think they, he's uh, tripping. I think back then they were pretty much all bad. <laughs> he got into a Radagast mushroom patch. 
You know, if Radagast actually stopped taking mushrooms for like a like one day, he would notice that there's bird shit in his head. <laughs> and he's like, some some smell like shit. <laughs> some smell like shit. It's you. No, it's not. No, it couldn't be. That, that that's all CG. That is not. Yeah, really it's, it's yeah, it's gotta be. Still love him though. Yeah. Even though he hated doing the role. <laughs> he didn't hate doing the role. He loved doing it. It's just that he was just not a fan of like all that Hobbit stuff. He's like, oh, okay. All that all that Hobbit stuff. Eh, it's beneath me. He's the one. He's the one yeah. I was talking yeah. about earlier. Yeah. <laughs> that guy's of that hair. Flock of seagulls. <laughs> he's, in, uh, he's in every Peter Jackson movie, I believe, ever since Dead Alive. Hmm. Guy plays Nori. Who did he play in Dead a, Alive? I don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm just saying he's like one of the Peter Jackson staples. Like oh. he, pe like he played like ten different roles throughout the Lord of the Rings movies, and but he's been in all. Would be great if he was the if he was the kung fu fighting priest from Dead Alive. I get ass for the Lord. Then let's go kick some ass. Oh, you, you, that, that, that was easy. That, that, was, that was a whole <laughs> Oh, wow, well, I guess it did the trick. <laughs> I am such a good pep talk giver. You gotta speak up more, more often, Keely. Or is that Feely? I don't even know. Keely. That's Keely. That's it's that Keely. Keely. Okay. He's the hot one. He's, he's the good looking Ken Keely. Who? Ken Keely. Ken Keely. I don't know who that is. <laughs> I don't know who it is. <laughs> oh, I thought you were, I thought that was like some name of some Ken, sport. Oh, I know Ken Keeler. Wasn't he like a writer for Futurama and The Simpsons? Like he wrote the what? principal and the popper? I don't... Where I, are we going with this? What are you I talking don't know, about? Said, when he said Ken Keeler, I thought I was talking about some baseball player. Like, I don't know. <laughs> Who was the one player I... Uh, what was it? I told you the... Oh, fuck it. I forget all these baseball players. Anyway, dwarves and <laughs> hobbits. You know, dwarves invented baseball. <laughs> why why are they baseball bats? It was originally with axes and severed heads. Yeah. And it just kind of evolved from there. Because you can only because you can only cut off so many heads from the other team before you realize <laughs> that it's not going to work. Jesus Christ! All shout in black speech. That's what, that's what the subtitle just Jesus said. Jesus Christ! This yeah. this is so racist. They should say African American speech. <laughs> it's, it's there. There has to be a bit. Okay. Well, he played it, no, no, that's no, no. a great tuba. shot. He played no, a tuba. <laughs> no, you, I, you know what comes up in my head every time I see it in black speech? I go, phrasing! <laughs> <laughs> of course, the funny thing was is that it came out of his butt. Boom! That's pretty cool. You think that bell's <laughs> ringing? <laughs> Love the music here, too. It's great. We gotta run away from the bell before it comes back. We should have thought that bell thing through. <laughs> and then of course you look now, the bell just completely disappeared in that last shot. Swung all the now way back. Now it's gone. No, look, it's not even there. Look, it's gone. Yeah, where's Bomber? He was blowing the horn. He's got to come back down. Yeah. And right now he's wheezing halfway down the stairs. <gasps> <gasps> oh God! Why did I have to be so fat? I'll just blow the I'll blow the horn again. Now they, here's another why, thing. Why did they invent <laughs> cheese? Uh, why is it so tasty? Oh, God. Here's another thing I feel like they cut uh, down that's gonna be in the hopefully fingers crossed in the extended uh, edition is giving uh, all these. Uh, you're really taking this bomber impression to the next level. Uh, <laughs> but uh, with the, like. I want to see more of all these dwarves that we've gone through all these movies with having their own special moment on like, screen fighting, just slaughtering orcs, and, uh, and then and you don't get any of it. And, and of course, God. Keely banging Tariel. And that too, yeah. Excuse me. Oh, I had to get that last one out. <laughs> okay, guys, I'm here. Seriously, that's Rowan Atkinson. Oh, no. Oh, for f See, this is why I hate this fucking character. Because it just... Oh my god. It just goes like, like really? You're going to do cross-dressing jokes now? Like, okay. That is not Bobby Heenan. Alright, that, that... Okay. 
for a film as long as it is, why is he supposed to show? Okay, this. Okay, I understand. Well, he's greedy. He loves gold. You don't yeah. want to be like him. He's a weasel. But we've already got it with Thor. Yeah, they're just really pounded into the ground now. <laughs> I mean that's that's a miss that's a misstep an unfortunate misstep he yeah. should have died in the boat. <laughs> oh, you dwarves, killing and hugging. Yes, we know who their leader is. I love this ram idea yeah. too. It was great. Huh. See now from here on out we basically only focus on these, you know, very small handful of dwarves. And I want to yeah. see more of all the other ones. Yeah. But they just yeah, Bomber's, they don't do anything with them. Bomber's busy, you know, still climbing down the stairs. <laughs> yeah. Oh god. Oh Jesus. He gets down, the battle's already over. <laughs> Wait, I should just roll down the stairs. <laughs> She just pull a fud butt from Hook. Yeah. Oh god, down. that's a good like the giant bowling ball. Oh, I was thinking of Eddie Murphy. <laughs> oh lord, Jesus Christ! Oh lord, help me, please, Jesus, please! <laughs> My helmet. <laughs> the thud. Yeah, all these orcs go down way too yeah. easily. I just realized his name was Thud Butt. Yeah. Why didn't they say, hey, Thud Butt? They said it a couple times. They didn't say Thud Butt and Hook? Yeah. Uh -huh. I don't know. He had a big so... wheel of cheese that had Thud Butt written on it. Yeah. He did? Mm -hmm. they, they usually call him Thud for short, but yeah. they, they see... say Thud Butt I a couple times. I don't remember times, this. Thud Butt. Okay. I mean, I knew his name was Thud Butt, but I, I always thought they never called him Thud Butt because... Well, then how else would you know his name is Thud Butt? I never knew his name was Thud Butt until I was, <laughs> I was older. <laughs> I just I just thought it was the the black kid in the beret. <laughs> now I know who wrote down black. <laughs> oh, so that's the fifth army. Okay. So we have the two orc armies, the dwarfs. And the elves, and now we have this fifth army surprise coming from... The, is that what's going on? Oh, I thought the orcs were the, the one army, and then the eagles were the fifth. Is that... Is that uh, or is that yeah, about I six... Or is that six armies? I don't know. But then you begin to think about it, are the This elves, is another reason why they shouldn't have changed the, changed the fucking title. But then again, that was the name uh. of the chapter of the book. That's why they went with it. But then again... Yeah, they, they do mention it quite a yeah. few times in the book, which is fine, but... They were, it was originally there and back again... Which is the actual title of the fucking book, yeah. and it's like, just leave it be. Like, ugh. But then, if you, then if you think about it, it's not really uh, uh, five armies or six armies because they, the dwarves and the elves and the men, combine for one super army. Oh, is may, is the men supposed to be the fifth army? Maybe that's it. Yeah. No, the, okay. If you just count it, the men, the dwarves, the elves, the orcs. It's still only four. But then the fifth are going to be the other orcs. orcs. Well, the other so it's the orc army that's fighting now, and then the, the other, other orc army that came down from the. If you want to count, because Witch I, King, I have to say counting the yeah. eagles just because. <sighs> I don't know. God damn it! <laughs> Maybe it was just called there and back again. You're not supposed to think about the number of arms. You're just supposed to shovel popcorn into your face and and watch the CGI. That's what's supposed to happen. All this for pretty jewels that you can buy at sales. <laughs> he didn't go to Jared. <laughs> I'm getting the fuck out of here. <laughs> That's the name, Thrandil. They all sound the same. <laughs> Racist. Because you're just a hobbit. Okay, look over there. Another thing we need to see more of. The hobbit. 
considering that, you know, it's called the, the title Hobbits. of the trilogy is called The Hobbit. Well, to, kinda, to be f- he kind of gets lost in the shuffle, too, which is well, too bad. He does, but one of the things when it comes to the, the book itself is that Bilbo himself is, it is somewhat more of a passive character. Where he's like, oh, every other character gets into battles or such, or infamously, during this battle here, he gets knocked out while everybody mm-hmm. gets, you know, the, the target. Yeah, that's what happens in the book is that it's, he gets knocked out really early on and misses the entire battle. And, and then they, they kind of, and then he, and then he wakes up, and the the battle's already over, and they're searching for him. And you can't do that in a feature length film. If you yeah, did exactly. that, you will piss off the entire freaking theater, except <laughs> for those diehard Tolkien fans. Like, hey, he's just like in the book. He's just like in the book. <laughs> and I think that's one of the issues I do have with some of the Tolkien fans. Well, I do understand like some of the changes and such they made when you're adapting, you know, his work. But the thing is. You have to think of it in terms of a, an audience. Mm-hmm. You have to... The the first three Lord of the Rings did a really good job of finding that balance. Yeah, absolutely. Of a mainstream best. action fantasy movie and staying true to all the material and stuff. The, the Hobbit movies, not so much. But they still find you know, a fairly good balance, I guess. They, they try to pack in a lot more stuff, I think, because they know there's never going to be any more yeah, movies that's, that's in this kind point. of universe. That's a good point. So they're trying to pack in stuff from... All the appendices and and other maybe other books. I, I haven't read all the other books, so I don't know what's in. But uh, yeah, I love so what... they're just trying to pack in as much as they can before they, you know, never make any ever again. I love the joke where they said, "And now we're going to adapt the Silmarillion," and they're like, "No, no, we don't." Are they going to make it three fucking movies too? <laughs> I don't think they can, I don't think they have the rights to because no, uh, they don't. They don't because yeah. Tolkien's uh, kid refuses to uh, yeah. do it because he doesn't like Jackson's movies. Oh, I love that. He's got little... It's, it's funny because he has gold in his arms. boobs. He's got a little hand and arms. It's cute. It's great that there's deformity that cursed him for his entire life until his unfortunate death. You <laughs> found amusing, David. <laughs> that was cute. It's funny because he touched his boobies. You know what I really like that they cut out of uh, the Lord of the Rings trilogy? Right. The character of Tom Bombadil. Oh god! I love Tom. I hate I, Tom in the book, I love Tom Bombadil. No, why? Wow, he's so boring. He's Nothing so happens. I'm Tom happens. Bombadil singing a song. Sing, sing, <laughs> sing. I do nothing for the plot. <laughs> That's exactly how it's written. That's exactly how. But I like Tolkien that though. It. I like it though. It's but it just when I was reading it and I was going, yeah, he will not work in yeah. a movie. He doesn't work in the book. He works. He does. I think he does. What work does in he the do? Book. What is his purpose? It's one of those to represent like the last remnants of innocence in that world before he, before you know, Frodo and the rest of the hobbits go beyond that into the world of men and the world of orcs and goblins and witch kings and bibbity bongs and what have you. That Tom Bombadil is like the last pure innocent thing before they leave. So that way it. It works for me, but in a film, you can't do that because yeah. you have to move past it. Because in a film, visually, we get it, like how happy, you know, Hobbiton is and the Shire and Bag Inn and all that. It's already set in stone. We bought it. We're good to go. You do that, and you got to get the plot moving. Like, oh, shit, we got to get it going because bad things are going to happen. If you don't, and you waste it all on Tom Bombadil, it kills the, it kills the plot. It, it, Tom Bombadil is next to impossible for me to get through in the books. Like, I, <laughs> like I will be speeding along in, in Fellowship of the Ring, yeah. then along comes Tom Bombafuck, <laughs> and, and, it, and it will take me two days to get to it because I just want to go back to reading it. Well, two things I'll say. Number one, um, bear in mind, is I'm not one of those who is like, you being like Tom Bombadil, you're not a real fan. I'm not one of those people. I do understand how polarizing yeah, you Tom are, Bombadil is. Yeah, you are. Second, <laughs> second, you have to write a film featuring a character called Tom Bombdafuck. <laughs> this is sad. Or Feely. Aww. Or is it Keely? I don't fucking know. It's Feely. Fuck, Keely is the sexy yeah. one. Okay. It's Feely. I remember because uh, I, I first read The Hobbit when I was in high school when the Lord of the Rings movies were coming out. Oh, God. I read it again right before the first Hobbit movie came out. And I remember oh, two of the dwarves, other than Thorin, died. But I couldn't remember who. So when I read the book again before this one came out, I was like, oh, Feely and Keely died. And then I realized, like, oh, Feely and Keely died. I felt bad. Because what was really tragic about it for me is they were the youngest ones. Mm-hmm. And and Feely was the, the direct heir after yeah. Thorin. So he should, 
you know, if he had stayed alive and Thorin had died, then he would be yeah. king under the mountain. So with these two dead, who is the next, who's the heir? Uh, Dane. Yeah. The, the... Billy Connolly. Billy Connolly. Okay, so yeah. Dane becomes king under the and mountain? That's, yeah, yeah, and that's another thing that they completely take out of the movie that's in the book, and I feel like is going to be in the extended edition, is that Dane becomes the new king. There And I, I have, I've seen one of the... Uh, the, the artwork books for this one and they have this whole big scene of Thorin's funeral and it looks amazing and again they completely take it out of the movie and I have no doubt it will be in another reason why I really want to see the extended edition is all this stuff that I'm I feel like should have been left in and they cut out here's another for thing, no reason here's another thing I want to bring up that it might be a fault with the book itself and, and they actually change this in the Rankin Bass version and that is in The Hobbit there three of Three dwarves of the company die. Feely, Keely, and spoilers, Thorin. Mm -hmm. He dies. And in the... That's right, doggy. And in the <laughs> animated version, I think seven or eight dwarves live. So they actually do kill off some of the dwarves. Mm -hmm. And so I'm thinking, maybe one of the issues is that they don't kill off, you know, some of these dwarves. And so, yeah, but in Lord of the Rings, not many members of the Fellowship... Yeah. Killed. Like, yeah, but, but, it's, but it's done in such a way. Sean like, Bean dies because Bormier. he's contractually. Con it's in his contract. He has to die in every movie. Yeah, he's but in. I think it's also different. And then Gandalf dies, but he's brought back. Yeah, so. and I th and also the fact that they're separated. Where you know Frodo and Sam are off mm -hmm. doing that. Merry and Pippin are taken away, and Aragorn, Gimli, and Legolas have to go after them. Boromir's dead, and Gandalf's dead at that point. It's and so they're split up. But in this case, they're not. You know, for the most part, they're not split up. They're all together. So. Oh, there goes that Legolas. Peter Jackson stole that from King Kong. He just blatantly ripped off his own movie. His own killer That's bats. unforgivable. <laughs> I don't like that sword he's wielding, the thorn. The Orcus? I don't like it. I don't it looks like almost it. like He-Man. So. No, no, he has, it, it's this whole new... Oh, well, well, that's not the Orcus. Oh, Christ got to take him he, away from yeah. He had his... He, yeah, because uh, Legolas, Legolas has is it right now. Legolas is going to give But it. he had a really cool-looking sword in the, in the first... Uh, but before he got the Orcrest sword, he had a really yeah, cool-looking yeah, sword. Yeah, but that got taken away from him, too. By Did the it? goblins. Stop yeah. stealing his shit, you assholes. <laughs> God, he really is a bad king. He gets his shit stolen from him. No <laughs> wonder he's so protective. He's like, you ain't gonna steal my shit. The goddamn goblins stole my shit. Elves fucking stole my shit. You think I want the fucking human... The dragon stole our shit. That's why we come back for it. Why do you think I want some goddamn human stealing my shit? He looks like he's having fun there. Yeah. Maybe Good for we, Legolas. Maybe we and, remember in this, and remember in this video game, you have to keep pressing the A button to stay on. <laughs> if you don't, you're going to fall to your death. You know, there's only, really, the only video God, game that Bilbo came out of... Bilbo has a fucking arm. <laughs> yeah. Bilbo has a goddamn oh, arm on Now he gets knocked down. Bilbo would give Justin Furlander, Furlander a run for his money. Her, her, her. Now, in, uh, in the book, it's interesting, he gets knocked out while he has the yeah. ring on, and that's why... Yeah. He doesn't get killed, and no one's able to find it. But here, he just gets flat out, you know, I thought I'd get, knocked down. I thought I get bonus points for mentioning a Detroit Tiger with our Tigers fan here. <laughs> Ooh, ouch! Go, or should you say, going for the Keeley? <laughs> <laughs> they missed such a great opportunity. <laughs> that's a, that's a Michael Bay line. If Michael <laughs> Bay directed The Hobbit. Oh my God, that would be interesting, to say the least. Be a lot of nudity. Well, I, I guarantee you um, that you would probably see um, Tariel in like a fucking bikini. Oh yeah, absolutely. Which you know that I wouldn't mind. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't mind. <laughs> I, I mentioned this. I oh god, I'm probably gonna sound like such a sexist ass here. But, oh yeah, like we've ever cared oh, about that before. On <laughs> no, no, <laughs> but but one of the things that I do like about these films is that is you know Liv Tyler's a She's a pretty woman, right? Mm -hmm. Evangeline mm -hmm. Lilly's a pretty woman. Yeah. Miranda Otto's a pretty woman. But they're not like... You don't see them in like the... For the most part, like the, the top ten hottest women of all time. Top five. You know what I mean? Like Evangeline those... Lilly was in uh, Max. I think she was like hottest yeah. of the year after when Lost got really popular. Yeah. Like, well, maybe, but I mean, I generally don't see her as being like considered like one of the hot... Hot, hot ones, right? Like on a like well, look, is, well, look, well, well, look, no, who, get, look who gets put on that, those lists. Like Miley Cyrus is considered or, uber uh, hot, and yeah, I'm sorry. Any day of the uh, week, Evangeline Lilly. Any day of the fucking week. But I mean, I, I guess what I'm trying. I would, to... Like a guaranteed handshake versus a guaranteed blowjob from Miley Cyrus, I would still go with Evangeline Lilly's guaranteed handshake. 
I mean, basically what I'm getting at is that what I like about them is that they're all they're beautiful women, but they're beautiful in the sense like, oh, I can believe that they're beautiful. They're like, okay, I believe that I could see them. It's not like the girls in the Michael Bay movies where exactly. they're all just Playboy models. Oh, uh oh. And Victoria's Secret, you know, angels or whatever they're called. Yeah. Uh oh. See, that's when he's supposed to say the line. He's going in for the Keeley. Ooh. Oh, that's sad. Oh, they could have made little munchkins together. <laughs> I, I wonder what an elf dwarf child would look like. Okay, how do you think the fans were? Peter Dinklage. <laughs> so it would be totally fucking badass thing. Yeah, <laughs> it would be Tyrion Lannister, fucking badass, drinking wine, fucking bitches. <laughs> oh, that's a, that's a staple, Peter Jackson. The one tear rolling down the face. Single tear. Yeah. Now, how do you think fans would have been pissed off if if they had, had Keely live? Yeah. Um. Yeah, oh yeah. So. It's like it's one of those when it comes to because the then he gets a happy ending. Yeah, and the adaptations yeah. you have to make certain Feely, Keely, and Thorin die. You can kill off the other dwarfs because you know there will be that one person who gets mad if oh I don't know <laughs> if Bomber dies or yeah. Beaufort dies, but. You have to kill off the ones who are supposed to die. Now, at some point, uh, let, let's, like, sh I, at some point, unless it's already happened and I missed it, uh, Tariel does a fucking Hurricane Rana on somebody. <laughs> I believe it. No, wait, it might be Legolas. Ooh. It might be Legolas who does it. You can't tell because they're both just so darn pretty. Yeah, pretty they're much. They're interchangeable. <laughs> Uh-oh! Oh! That's a, that's that's one of the, that's like one of the first. Put your knife in there. Shoot that. <laughs> Just use your hotness. Whee! Ooh, Howie. See, okay, that that um troll what right the? there. Yeah, what that, is? No, no, he looks like it's like it's like a Clive Barker. Troll. I was gonna say yeah. that he reminded me of it's, Pinhead a little. Those arms and legs, just like what is happening. Like, where'd that come from? <laughs> Ooh. Whee! <laughs> I mean, say what you will about Peter Jackson in the movies, but he and his wedded team, they come up with these wonderful creature designs. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I have a couple of the... I have one of the things, the art books for Fellowship, and I have a couple for... I have one for the first Hobbit movie and one for this movie, and it's all... It's fascinating. It's great. I definitely... That's one thing I definitely want to add more to my collection, like... like art books from films and stuff. Because I got this for my wife. I got this big art book of Tim Burton. Art of Tim Burton. Like there's, this big coffee table type. Oh, um, yeah. It's a wonderful book. Yeah, book. And awesome. there's also um, this Wes Anderson book I saw mm. that contains many of his sketches and his brother's sketches, I believe. I, I really do love that. When they, I'd like to see... I don't know if David Lynch has put out like a book dedicated to his art. I but don't know. I'd love to see it. <laughs> <laughs> or also dedicated to... What was, this, what was the name of this comic strip? The Angriest Dog in the World? I guess. Yeah. <laughs> and I've you, never heard of this. Apparently you asked the wrong person. Yeah. <laughs> I've never heard of this comic Uh-oh. No! This is a neat sequence. I like the idea of this. It goes on a little too long, but uh, it's, a, it's a cool <laughs> idea. Like, oh, I guess I'll save his life. Oh, I like the, I That's love an that. awesome look. That's, I love the face on the body. That's a, that that's I love cool. that orc design. That wasn't very kind. Oh, <laughs> son of a bitch. Is that when he does a Hurricane Rana? I think he's gonna do one now. I'm pretty sure if, if it hasn't already happened, uh, it's coming up. I'm, I just wanted me to think it might have already happened, because I'm remembering it as being Tariel who did the Hurricane Rana. <laughs> Majestic as fuck. <laughs> And this is how you use their... In my opinion, when it comes to these fights and stuff... That shot was when, made for 3D. Yeah. Look at that. It's when, beautiful. One of the things that works about a fight sequence, or action sequence, is the environment. Definitely the environment. And yeah. also, um, these two actually have a huge problem with each other. Yeah. <laughs> so it's not just a silly little glow stick fight. Yeah, and what I do like about this is the fact that it's, it's light. So you're not going to yeah. miss anything. Mm -hmm. Because you know how some of them are done in like the, 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 the teal, the you know, the blue and the oranges, like that kind of mm. weird, ugly color. In this case, it's actually really nicely lit, nice colors and such. And it's like it's nice, you know, contrast 
to how dark everything is. Oh, you silly Legolas. <laughs> That's such a Legolas thing right there. There Her is! Karana! Her Her Karana! <laughs> He's been broken in half! My God! Stop the <laughs> match! Stop the damn match! <laughs> Third? I love the look on his face there. It's great. He actually did a Michael Brown face there for a second. I've seen Michael Brown do that face. <laughs> As a skip before. Yeah, I've seen it. <laughs> hey, Legolas, now that you're done, why don't you help him out? There you go. Oh. She doesn't love you, guys. She doesn't love you. She's Get love over her. She's in love with go the help Thorin. Dwarf corpse. This is another scene. I, I really like the idea of this, you you've, know, on the ice and everything. It just it just drags on a little too long. You've given up sure fo footing for a killing blow. <laughs> you know what actually I do I'm liking about this? It's just how awkward it is. <laughs> because think of it, these guys have yeah. basically spent all their lives thinking about wanting to kill each other, right? <laughs> and this is how it is, where they're just trying to get a good kill, but mm. they can't do it. It just goes to how, maybe how silly the whole thing is, if you think about See, it. See, right in that sequence, I thought he sliced his dick. I'm not even joking. When I first saw this, I was like, Maybe did he, he did? Did, he, did he slice him on the fucking dick? <laughs> yeah, dick slice. <coughs> I mean, I know we killed everyone you cared about, dude, but that's the dick. <laughs> See, the I, eagles I, are coming! Wait, that's, and that's, that has to be in the extended edition of the eagles showing up. More about how the... the yeah, they're out. definitely going to have more, because here's Radagast, and then the, the bear guy shows but up yeah. and for, like, half a second. And he just notice his poopies on the wrong side. Unless he <laughs> no, just... No, he, call, he washed his hair, then the birds turn yeah. on the other side. See, and then here's the be bear guy. Great, this, I love this idea of him transforming and coming down that's and cool. kicking some ass. Bear arms, but then this yeah. is all you see of him. And here's our friend JP in the movie. <laughs> The big giant. But yeah, I feel like there's going to be a lot more of him in the ex and another, another reason I really want to see the extended <laughs> edition of this one more so than any of the others. After all the build up of wanting to kill him for years, that's how he does it. See, that's a great <laughs> idea. I, I just wanted. I just wanted to give you something heavy. Blah 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 blah. You dick. Blah 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 blah. Little did he know he was a gold medalist swimmer. Well, how am I going to get across this thing? I'm a cocksucker. <laughs> I'm a douchebag. That's right, I'm under the water. I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna cut your dick off like you cut off mine. You son of a bitch. It's like I the, love this visual, it's blah, great. Blah, 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 but, but again, it just it drags on a little too long. I like this. It's just makes the fight scene a little longer than really, it needs to be. It's really creepy. It's great. Like, oh no, it's really creepy. Oh god. Get away from it! <laughs> yeah, see, exactly. You. No, 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 I mean... And then he follows it. I was like, how oh. fucking stupid are you, Thor? Don't you Why? watch these movies? <laughs> Don't you know what's gonna happen? <laughs> but it's gorgeous. Oh, God. Aw, he's so cute. <laughs> Hi! That's smart. Jeez. He must be really cold. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, you can see the shrinkage. <laughs> Still, I'm just like, ugh. Because he's like, you want people to show up, help save him, save him, yeah. crying out loud. Bilbo, if you hadn't gotten knocked out, you dick. Oh. Eat a bag of dicks. <laughs> Kiss! 
that must have been really embarrassing. Think of it. Like, the last thing you see is a son of a bitch who wanted to kill you, <laughs> looking at you like, ha-ha, I may be dead, but I'm still living. Yeah, you killed me. Was it worth it? <laughs> <sighs> well, I guess I'll go home now. <laughs> oh, wait, I got stabbed. Yeah. <laughs> No, this was also changed because if I, I'm assuming what's going to happen is, do they take him to his deathbed, and that's when mm. Bilbo says goodbye, or does nope. Bilbo say goodbye here? He does it right here. We're just okay. That's changed because yeah. originally that's a big change that I don't really like. I, I will, oh, that's great right there. Yeah. The blood, that's great. But um, no, I, 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 I would prefer if they'd done it, him going to the deathbed and Thorn really, you know, trying to stay alive as long as possible so that he can. Yeah. You know, but, apologize to Bilbo, kind of, because that's what kind of happens in the book, and I like that a lot. But here, they just kind of maybe they'll have like more extended. But it, but it's still a nice little scene because they they keep a lot of the same dialogue from the book, which is nice. But uh, and I can understand why they did it with the whole you know not going to the tent because mm -hmm. for a film that's you know you know over two hours long and such, it's sort of like okay, you know. Cut from here, get him over to the tent. When instead you can just have it to where they're all in the same location. He shows up. He's like, sorry I was a dick. Love you. Bye. <laughs> I need to borrow five dollars. <laughs> Literally, you're not going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> You mean this plot wasn't going anywhere? Aww. Forgive me. I was too blind to see. He's a cute dwarf. I am so sorry. But I have let you in so far. Yeah, they're both no. they're both doing great acting job and everything. I just would rather have seen the seen the scene in, the, in the setting that it was originally done in the book. Just it would have would have worked better for me, but yeah. we bros, man, we bros. <laughs> I wish to part with you as bros. Is that what's gonna Give happen? Give me a fist bump before I die. Is this what's gonna happen when we're on our deathbeds? <laughs> we're gonna come in here. <laughs> I thought it. <laughs> Bury me <laughs> under one, so I will always be with you. I'll never let go, Thorin. <laughs> so buy The Hobbit on Blu-ray, and then buy The Hobbit on the Extended Edition. That sounds like some kind of fascist commie lingo to me. Don't tell me what to do. <laughs> Hated you. Oh. <laughs> and yeah, we have, I, yeah, I was waiting Baggins. for it. <laughs> <laughs> One time when you were sleeping, I put my dick in your mouth and <laughs> <laughs> That's a good shot. I'm gonna make it. I like I like to contrast this now with how Return of the King ended, with like you know the eagles and the two mm -hmm. friends. You know, mm -hmm. and in this case, like the friends still alive. In this case, one friend is dead, mm -hmm. and one potential Loba is dead. Now I really like this scene with her talking to uh, like <laughs> listening to me pace about you know being in love and stuff like that. This the scene works and it kind of makes the love story worth it. But like we said before, it well, could still do. Is it, it a love story? Do they ever kiss? No, it's an no. it's an unrequited love story. Okay. Which is still a love story. Mm -hmm. Just no kissing or banging. Yeah. Extended edition, literally. Now this is the scene I fucking hate. Okay. I don't get it. This is the scene. I hate this goddamn scene so much. This is the worst thing in all six of the Middle Earth movies. Where were you now about? do you hate now do you just like it for the same reason I do? To, to, for for me, this scene reminds me of when old Spock shows up in Star Trek again. in the Darkness. It's just uh, completely useless and has no point. Anything. It's basically just a giant wink to the audience to be like, "Huh, huh? Remember, remember that stuff in the earlier movies that you like? Yeah, huh? It's like Peter Jackson <laughs> is elbowing me in the ribs, going like, "Huh? See what I'm doing here? It's like, fuck this shit." It's, uh, 
Why do you hate the scene, Kayla? Is the same reason? It's reasons? coming up. No, it's coming up. I'll show you why. It's coming up. Bye. <laughs> right here. What the fuck does that have to do with anything? Yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> Because throughout any of the movies, it's, it's throughout, as soon as the elves show up and we see Legolas, they don't fucking talk about his mom. They don't bring her up once. We he, have no idea that there's any trouble between those two. He and, mentions her once when they're at the Witch King castle, but simply that she died there. And that's that's yeah. the only thing they say about the mother, I believe. Yeah, and that pisses But yeah, it's still... There's, that's what gets yeah. me, because if we're going to do something like that, then you're, with that line, you're making the assumption that Legolas thought that his mother died. Yeah. Didn't love like, him. Like of all the shit that they that they could have cut out, like <laughs> God, why didn't they cut out? That, like that's a scene where I'd yeah. be like, okay, that's totally an extended edition scene. It's Watch not, it on the extended edition. Could yeah. it come out later this like, year? It has, on nothing, it has nothing to do with anything, but they added it in for the extended edition. But they left it in the theatrical for absolutely no reason. It's pointless. But this is a nice little scene between them two. I, I do like this little scene. So do you think if she and um, Dominic Mon uh, Monaghan go to conventions, it's awkward? <laughs> yeah. Since, since, it's, since they're, it's, they're both in Middle Earth things now? Awkward. <laughs> well, maybe it's sort of like, you know, they're cool with each other. Not like, yeah, that's cool, you cheated on me. But, yeah, we're cool. Because you got your man, it you, happens, got, you, you know. got your kids, and I got my thing going. I'm on a fucking nature show, and it's awesome. <laughs> is, he, is he still doing that nature show? I don't know. Uh. I was, you know, I was in X Men Origins Wolverine yet. Um, no, but she's really quite good. I like, I like Ev 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 Evangeline. What's her name? Evangeline. 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 That's like a superhero name. Evangeline. Evangeline me. This is another great. Just this visual scene is. Just ma it, ma it makes me smile. As opposed to the uh, non-visual scenes. <laughs> yes, as opposed to the non-visual. <laughs> As opposed to the scenes where my eyes are closed. Yeah. I think maybe that's what I was missing. I wanted maybe more scenes of Gandalf and Bilbo. Bilbo. Smoke him if you got him. <laughs> Let's toke up. Someone's <laughs> dead, asshole. There's a lot of people dead. Asshole. <laughs> then we'll smoke out in his honor. Let's hotbox it in a Smoke tent. him to peace pipe. <laughs> See, that's another reason this should have taken place in the tent, so they could hotbox. <laughs> See, that's just a great little moment. Aww. I like that. It kind of reminds me of at the end of Return of the King, mm -hmm. where they're all kind of reuniting, but then you get Bilbo and Sam, and they're just they just give each other that look from across the room. I'm just like, we've been through some shit. Oh, yeah. You know, that's, it reminded me of that. And where have all these guys been? Like, why haven't we been seeing them? Oh, God, I'm, I'm gone up here. Oh, Jesus, God, I'm so... <laughs> oh, oh. And the ice just broke underneath. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember, did you ever see that Conan O'Brien That ice refroze yeah. really quickly. <laughs> but, you know that, that clip from Conan O'Brien when they reviewed the score and Marlon Brando was on it and Marlon Brando <laughs> fell through the, <laughs> through the floor? <laughs> Oh, that's Bomber right now. <laughs> Bomber's still working his way up the mountain to see his dead king. <laughs> <laughs> he just got down from the stairs after blowing the horn at the beginning. Oh, I made it far. Oh, shit. Did I miss it? Oh, oh guys. Oh, God. Damn it. Who's supposed to wait for oh, me? Oh, Jesus. Uh, uh, I ate all the food. I'm sorry. <laughs> You know what's the one little detail mm. I always love about these about Peter Jackson Middle Earth films is that not every horn sounds the same. That I always like. Really? That. That's the that's the things that you focus well, no, on. What I love is a nice little attention to detail. That isn't just oh here come the elves. <laughs> oh here come the orcs. <laughs> here come the people from Rohan. <laughs> here come the horn makers. <laughs> yeah. Here come the people who hate who hate horns. <laughs> Stop that! <laughs> <laughs> Aww. He would be a good Santa, huh? <laughs> now this is bullshit. If I was one of the other dwarves, I would be fucking pissed. It's like, we've been through so much shit, and you're just gonna walk out. You're not even gonna say goodbye. Like, yeah. fuck you. See, this is nice. Like, oh, they're gonna say goodbye. If I was one of them, I'd be like, no, fuck you, Bilbo. You were just gonna walk out. <laughs> like, how dare you? 
Oh no, fuck you! You wanted to leave! <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, no, 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 you wanna leave? Fucking leave. Douche. You fucking asshole. Yeah, I'll throw the tea in your goddamn face. Yeah, I was fucking nice to you, and you treated me like shit. <laughs> yeah, I fucking ate all your hair. But remember, I said teas at four? <laughs> You're welcome anytime, but teas at four. Yeah. Just. Bilbo needs Bilbo time. So it would have been nicer if he had like gone up to each one of them individually, kind of like uh, I'm gonna miss you most of all, Scarecrow. Right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like give them each, you know, a little individual goodbye. But no, it's just like, okay, guys, bye. It's just, it doesn't resonate with me as as well as it yeah. could have. I never I saw much. I never saw much of Bilbo after that. <laughs> <laughs> I think it just works with how Baleen's face is just this, you know, like I probably won't see him again, but you know. I will say, at least this movie doesn't have twelve fucking endings. Aww. Like Return of the Goddamn King. And Return of the Con- Return of the God Return of the Cunt? No, Return of the Goddamn King's endings are fine because there's the one where everybody kneels to the hobbits. Yeah. No, it's all the endings after that that take place. That I'm willing to I'm willing I'm willing to take I'm willing to I'm willing to take all those endings for that one. The, and again, I'm sure there's a scene where they dig up that uh, uh, chest a, from the, the troll cave, which is yeah. from the first movie. Yeah. And not only that, but there has to be a scene where he gets all those new clothes too. Yeah, too, that too, exactly. He looks pretty badass right now, though. Like, why didn't he look this badass in the rest of the movie? <laughs> oh, and this is also controversial, too. Mm-hmm. What, that... The magic he, rings that he knows that he has a magic ring. Because people are like, well, wait a minute, did he know about the magic ring? He, he doesn't know it's the one ring. He just he knows, knows that it's a magic, magic ring. Magic he's, ring. Yeah. he's known for... Because even in Fellowship of the Ring, he says there are many magic rings in the Yeah, none of them should be taken yeah, lightly. Did, exactly, yeah, and, yeah. I think he, even in the book, The Fellowship of the Ring, he yeah. didn't know it was the one ring. And, and yeah. even in Fellowship, and even in the film, it's pretended he has to go to Gondor, and he's like, wait a minute, yeah. I have to find out about this ring. He has to Sudor. do all the research. Yeah. And, yeah. And Sudor had it, and I, I did, did he know that you put the ring on it makes you invisible. Did he yeah. know that? See, he doesn't know. I, I think that's all he knows, that he has this magic ring that can help him disappear and shit. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. <laughs> oh, the dog's getting mad. Dog's going crazy now. He's like, why am I not in this movie? I'm quite a little sexy fellow. That's a nice line from the book, the yeah. Captain. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Whatever, man. I'm out of here. Peace. That's the thing. I, I I think if there is an extend if there is an extended scene, uh, it, it has to be it has to be of uh, the dwarves giving something because that's a dwarf shield. Maybe it's like an alternate scene. Yeah, maybe. We'll have to wait and see. I love that they built um they had to rebuild Hobbiton, but they made it all um permanent. Yeah. Now so that it's. Because it's always been a tourist attraction, but it's never looked like that. It's just been kind of and the mounds they, and the they, fields. What, do they rent out the holes for people to live in? For no, no. Life? But it's just kind of, you know... You the, just go... Just okay, I, know, I know that Peter Jackson lives in a hobbit hole. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, isn't, like, the Dragon's Inn, isn't that been converted to a hotel? Uh, I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised. But now all these, like, hobbit holes and stuff are... Are permanent so that they, they can last, and when people visit it, you know, it looks exactly like it's from the movie. And... Well, look, there was the sixth and, doctor and, yeah. in the corner. He was like the the curly blonde hair, red and multicolored jacket. And I am glad they addressed this issue because I remember thinking, like, didn't he tell anyone that he was leaving? Like, hey, can you look after my shit while I'm yeah. gone? So I am glad they addressed this. It's a and nice little and it's, comedic and thing. And it's also good Lord of the Rings where he says, you know, look at that I'm hat. leaving now. She, look, she looks like she's from a Tim Burton movie. Look at that. <laughs> I was going to say she looks like she came from Wizard of Oz. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. That does look like Wizard of Oz. I like how that guy's name is Tosser. <laughs> I always love. Him. Yeah, it's like, don't they fucking know that he's Bill? Like, what? Here's All my you, driver's yeah, license. Yeah, where's your Hobbiton off. driver's license? All you motherfuckers want my shit. <laughs> I had it refocused. Look at all my through. shit. Look at all my... Look at my dwarf gold. I got the motherfucking one (laughs) ring. Look at my shit. And we had this idea for a Game Boob movie where Game Boob goes back in time. Oh, I'm still writing. Oh, and he goes back in time and sees all these historical figures. Like, Nathan would play... Who did you play? Rasputin. You would play Rasputin. Oh, of course, And Cameron would play Benjamin Franklin, but he'd play it like James Franco in Spring Breakers. (laughs) Look at my shit. I use this cat to discover electricity. Look at all my shit. Yeah. 
But I also like I, I did and see this. We finally come I back to the Hobbit hole. I mean, I nice. did I did spoil myself a little. Saw this bit. It, I I do like the way they tie it tie the end. And when I first when the, before I saw the first Hobbit movie, I figured I bet the end of the last movie is going to be with they're going to have Elijah Wood show up really quick and it's going to be yeah. leading to the last one. And then they put it right in the first movie. I was like, oh holy shit, they're really going with it right off the bat. But I like the way they. Uh, they connected the end of this movie with the beginning yeah. of a fellowship. There's his handkerchief. Yeah, a nice little callback with a handkerchief. I think was I think was nice. Not even. I like to. Uh, I like to imagine he just went door to door with this with Sting, and, <laughs> and just point out, like, "Give me my shit." Give back. me my shit back. <laughs> and are those are supposed to be uh, paintings of Peter and his and his wife Fran? Is it? Is either that or it's supposed it's, to be it, Peter's it, parents? It does kind of look like Peter Jackson a little bit. Just because say. this sword is not glowing <laughs> blue does not mean I will not gut you. Give me my shit back. <laughs> oh, he's gonna go insane. He doesn't even know. And he's, but I do like it's like it just feel kind of empty though. Mm. Well, they did take a but shit. He, yeah. but he <laughs> <has>. <laughs> right on the yeah. floor. But he has his precious. But I do like it's like once you know, reflecting with Thorin, like what if he becomes just like Thorin? Which he kind of does in a way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kind of like Gollum, yeah. Not with his wealth, obviously, but just with <laughs> the ring. His hand got old. <laughs> Why did that happen? Oh, wait, because he's home. And he also filmed all of his scenes in. Yeah, England, he didn't travel to New old. Zealand either. If he ever goes to New Zealand, he'll get so sick he'll just start puking yeah. up milk. Of course, they had to cut to the back of his head so they can use the same dialogue because from the first movie, because we know yeah. they don't use the exact same audio. People are gonna be pissed. Yeah, I probably would be like that too. A little. Oh, but is uh, Ian McKellen still going up to fly places? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Apparently, no. <laughs> but Ian Holm got really sick though. So. Oh, okay. And he's also, I think, a couple years older than Ian McKellen. <laughs> uh, and then he died. I do like that. Hey, remember how Thorin died? <laughs> oh, good times. And that's it. And then, of course, they end with uh, the same drawings like they did with <laughs> Return of the King, which I thought was a great touch, which I kind of knew they would. Yeah. I kind of, kind of figured, but there's Guillermo del Toro. Yep, and so it might be derivative of, you know, Return of the King's ending. And also the song is very similar to Into the West, which I, I don't mind because I, I love me some Into the West. I hate Into the West. Oh, really? I think that's an I awful... Will, I which is weird because I, I I love this song. I hate Into the West. Oh, I love Into the West. It's a uh, beautiful song. I cannot believe it won an Oscar for best awesome. song. It's awesome. The Oscars agreed with me. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> but this song is really nice. I really like this Billy Boyd song. It's and really who good. is this Billy Boyd? Played uh, Pippin. Yeah. Which is another nice connection because they used his song from Return of the King in the trailer. Yeah. Uh, for this one, which is again a nice touch. Ian McKellen getting top billing. Yep. And, and, he's all, and it's also what's good about it is the fact that it's like, you know, last goodbye. It's like, that's it, goodbye, no more yeah. Norris yeah. rooms. That's it. There's him, there's a Thorne. I hate that man. sword. It's his He Man sword. Oof. It's ugly as hell. She now, that's a question, though. That's, though. that's not no, ugly no, as hell. No. Mm -mm. Here's a question, though. Are these some of these drawings, or are they just images from the I've, film? I think they're they... drawings. No, they're all drawings. They're yeah. drawings. Really? They're all drawings? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. They're really fucking good, too. Oh, except that. That's a photo. Joe <laughs> Camp Cabbage Patch. <laughs> Santa! Some great He's character actors right as, the, as the dwarves. And that also is a very good picture. Mm. Cutie patootie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're not as handsome as your brother. Still pretty dark. Why did he I love that mustache. How does Billy Collier get Scots topper, bill, higher billing than all Baldy. these other guys? George Harrison. Duh. Hi, guys. That's a, Hi, guys. Great. James Nesbitt. Not he's another guy. character that he had great moments in the first <laughs> two movies. This is my and family. Was completely thrown aside. Fitz Russo. Fuck that character. He's a good actor. Fuck that character. <laughs> Oscar winners. I was barely in this. <laughs> Christopher Lee wasn't in the Shit, Return of the I'm King at all. He still got a picture. <laughs> Mr. Smith. Anderson joke. Mr. Red Anderson Skull. joke. Red Skull. Yeah. Orlando Bland. Her, 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 her. <laughs> they were barely in the movie, too. Like, uh, barely in the movie? Oh, nice. I didn't even da -da -da. think of that. I just sounded smarter than I really was. Da -da 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 -da. Mark Hadlow's a great actor. There's another actor I want to see in more stuff. 
Stephen Hunter, not a single line. And he's just higher billing than Adam Brown, who actually had some lines. <laughs> Aww. Manu, Bass, and Jean Tui. Dun dun! <laughs> Uh, okay, so, guys. So, how there, instead of do you? Because we usually say, "What do you think of this movie?" Uh-huh. How would you rank all six of the Middle Earth movies oh from from number one, from favorite to least favorite? Okay, go um, from the top down. Oh shoot. Okay, I would say Fellowship of the Ring mm. best. Then this might you know ruffle some feathers. But I would say The Hobbit next best because I really enjoyed the first the, Hobbit the first movie. Hobbit. Yeah, the mm. uh, Unexpected Journey. Then I would say. Two Towers, um, then uh, Battle of the Five Armies. Really? Yes. Mm-hmm. Then I would say Return of the King and then Desolation of Smaug. Because I just Desolation mm-hmm. of Smaug just feels like such total filler. <laughs> David? I'd say Return of the King, Two Towers, and Fellowship of the Ring. But bear in mind, I love those films. Mm-hmm. Love, love those films. That I think that... Uh, yeah, it might be grandiose of me to say this, but I do think the Lord of the Rings film is just one big film. I think is the crowning achievement of the past decade. It probably will be of the 21st century. I it's do hard think to disagree that. with that because it, it was a major achievement. So that's why... At least until Mallrats too. Until Mallrats. Oh, God. Yeah. I mean, it's one of those where it's like you see a film... It's like there were two films that were released in 2001... Lord of the Rings and Moulin Rouge. That those I are think, the only two movies no, 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 released those, in yeah. 2000. But, but bear in mind, those are the two films that I think have, you see their influences reach over how the how films were to be made in the future. That either they're going for more musicals or more, you know, ideas, prestigious films. Or in the case of Lord of the Rings, the idea of bringing back science fiction and fantasy films and giving a more of a realistic tone to it. I think it also did help when it came to the Marvel films, for example, like that you could take a risk and make a series of films that they might not be made at the same time, mm-hmm. but they can have a cohesive storyline and such. I'll say it right now, yeah. I am not a fan of Moulin Rouge. Yeah. At all. But anyway, so how? But so that, even though we were talking oh, during... Oh, Project Consultant. Yeah, um, nice note. Uh, so uh, even though Hobbit, we were talking during most of this movie, how would you rank the Hobbit movie? Because um, clearly the first three Lord of the Rings are at the top. I would go, so would do with these when it comes to the Hobbit films, I think my favorite is still An Unexpected Journey. That's still my favorite. Mm. Ugh. Do, you, do you think and this one is, if you get a chance to watch this film without us talking through the whole thing, do you think it's uh, better than uh, Desolation or, or not? If I don't watch this immediately, if let's say if I wait a little bit before I watch... Following Desolation of Smaug, I see them as one very long film. Mm-hmm. You, that That's how it is, because it does feel like directly following mm-hmm. it. Separately, oh, God. <laughs> well, okay, Smaug has better scenes in it. Smaug has mm-hmm. the barrel writing sequence. It has Bjorn. It has, uh, oh, God, is it Mirkwood or Milkwood? Mirkwood, Mirkwood yeah. Yeah, Mirkwood. it has Mirkwood. It has the scene with <coughs> Smaug and Bilbo, and for that, it puts it higher than Battle of Five Armies. But it does not mean anything wrong with this film. Well, I mean, it does have a lot there's, of things wrong with it. It's just, that, <laughs> there are, it's just that I feel that there are a lot more interesting things that happen in Desolation yep. of Smaug. There might be more things that, that may dragged it down, maybe, but some of the stuff... Basically, when I read The Hobbit, um... All my favorite scenes were in the first two thirds, essentially. But mm-hmm. then after they defeat a Smaug, it's like, oh, okay, well, all right. So that's how I would rank them, essentially. Okay. Yeah. I, I, for me, I would definitely put Fellowship of the Ring at the very top. I love that movie. I still think it's brilliant. I guess my second favorite would be Two Towers, followed very closely by the first Hobbit: The Unexpected Journey. I really enjoyed that one as well. Like I said, everything I loved about Lord of the Rings trilogy they packed into one movie. Thought that was great. And then I guess I would put Return of the King. I'm not a big fan of it. Or you know what? I'm you know I might put Battle of Five Arm. Or, oh God! See that's a tough one. Because this movie's so much shorter and it's better to get through than Return of the King. Is so long. I don't even know if I can answer my own question. Um, Battle of Five Armies and Return of the King would be really close to each other. But I, I think I'd put Desolation at the bottom, even though I still enjoy it. There's a lot of stuff in it I like, but kind of what I kind of agree with Camera. There is a lot of it feels like a lot of filler. Um, uh, I love but how yeah, it got, oh, I, so I guess ominous. that's how I'd rank it. 
<laughs> it was like it's so much filler. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> but uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I guess that's how I'd rank them then. Still, though, I mean, you can't, we can't take away just how much of an influence that Lord of the Rings definitely has. Oh, yeah, had. absolutely. Just, I, I, I don't think it deserved all, all, the, all the 11 Oscars that it won. I don't oh, think it, it did! <laughs> no, I don't think it deserved Best Picture. I do, like I said, I do think Jackson deserved Best Director because of the kind of all three movies as a whole. I don't think it deserved Best Screenplay Adaptation. I don't think it deserved Best Song. Mm -hmm. um, but most of the other ones, especially a lot of the technical ones, it, it, it I, I'll, I'll oh, say. Oh god, you have no it. idea how much I was like, yeah, during it, because like finally, like a fantasy film broke through with the Oscars mm -hmm. and won like the top prize, the top two prizes. Yeah, but I, I like the, the first two ones so much better than Return of the King, especially so Fellowship. The, I thought it was so what Peter far ja better. So what Peter Jackson got essentially was an award for the other two movies. Yeah, yeah. As, as far as far as best director well, goes, yeah, you, absolutely. But as far as best picture goes, even all the other movies that were nominated that year, I thought were far superior than Return of the King. My favorite, I think, Master probably and Commander? Master and Commander was probably my yeah. favorite of the ones that was nominated. Master and Commander is, I think, for brilliant. me, it's when it comes to those other films. Is I love me some Master and Commander, Mystic River. I'm kind of going through a bit of an anti Clint Eastwood phase. I have to <laughs> admit, I'm kind of. Bored by him. Lost in Translation, I still think holds up pretty well. Oh, Lost Translation is great. Yeah, Sea Biscuit is. Oh, Sea Biscuit's good. Sea Biscuit's okay. It's just that I, I, think I really like there are other Biscuit. movies that came out that year that I felt that I felt were were better that should have been nominated. Should have been nominated yeah. over Sea Biscuit or Mr. River for that matter. M Mr. River's good. I, it's fine. I, I, I loved it the first time I saw it. The more I saw it, I was kind of like, okay, it's still good. But I don't know. I kind of lost. I kind of lost his. I, I just get. I just get somewhat annoyed by Clint Eastwood's directing style. I don't like how he does it, but okay. sometimes but. we'll have to watch a Clint Eastwood movie then one of these days. We can talk about it. What, <laughs> every, what's your... every which way but loose. Oh, oh yeah. Eastwood well, it's got to be one he directed. I don't think he. I don't think he directed any of the chimp movies. Um, orangutan. Ar oh, God. I'm sorry. Excuse God. me. You just offended Doctor Sayus. <laughs> <laughs> first, okay, first you say Smaug is Smog. Now you're confusing orangutans with chimpanzees. So it's, it's all the same shit. That is so racist. <laughs> well, they throw the Against same shit around the same chips. And orangutans. <laughs> <laughs> you can't tell them apart, you know. My god, these credits just He's go on and on. He's me a dirty on. look. <laughs> I love looking at these pictures, though. They're all just fantastic. And they were all done by third graders. That's a lot of rotoscoping artists. Good lord. At least they don't put the uh, every member of the Lord of the Rings fan club in the credits anymore. Oh yeah, that's Jeez. when I had to stop when it comes to the extended editions. <coughs> they didn't even do that for the Hobbit extended editions, I don't think. Nope. I don't Good. Think so. Because it takes up like 15 minutes of fucking screen time. It's like, okay, it's nice that they did that, but good lord. So, yeah... So, uh, Cameron, uh, next week is your week, correct? Yes. Well, next week I'm going to ask all three people who listen to, uh, if they want to, you can bring a special themed drink. You can bring Heineken. Wait, no, you know what? Fuck that. Pabst Blue Ribbon. For that movie that I'll be bringing in next yeah. week. And you see, it's not obvious what that reference is. It just flew over my head. And, you know, I know you might get the urge to have a nice, uh, big slice of cherry pie and hot coffee, but wait for that for another time. Yeah. <laughs> that is so totally So, uh, are, are, are you going to tell us? I'm, I'm still lost. You'll f I can't tell them, but you'll find out. Okay. You'll still have to have yeah, it be a surprise. Have you ever seen a duck walk? No, but have you ever seen a chicken walk? Oh, yeah. I am so fucking lost right now. I'm look, just I'm, I'm just enjoying the nice drawings. Look, on the look I'll explain it to you about the time I found an ear in a in a uh, abandoned field right next to an old tool shed. You know, Cameron, you are one <laughs> suave <laughs> fuck. Let's fuck. I'll fuck anything that moves. Mommy, mommy. <laughs> Nathan, you want to go for a ride? Candy colored clown. <laughs> Bob, the candy-colored cloud. Oh, now it's coming to an end. There Water we go. Water tower. Oh, the... <laughs> the last goodbye. Written by a bunch of people. Billy no, Boyd. not just a bunch of people. Billy Boyd. And, and Philip Boyd, Boyd and, and Fran Walsh. Walsh. Like, the most important people. So, The Hobbit. 
Look at all those languages. Damn. Gotta get that foreign market. That's where the money's in now. Not in America anymore. All known languages. It's all in China. I will, <laughs> all know, it's being broadcast in all known languages, including Welsh. I will say this. The Hobbit's a better film than The Theory of Everything. But then I'll skip Theory of Everything. I still haven't seen it. And I've, I have no desire to. Hello. This is Stephen Hawking. And even I prefer this film over that. Is that really the image they're going to end on? Oh, that's bullshit. No, that's Bilbo the Baggins. image we're going to end on. Bilbo Baggins no, it's in, return. In, in Return of the King, they ended with uh, an image of the ring, which I thought yeah. was a nice ending. But that was just like, oh, part of a hobbit hole and well, was a it? window. Bilbo Baggins that's will, bullshit. Bilbo Baggins that will return in The Fellowship of the Ring. Is that, yeah. <laughs> I thought, is that how it ended with the ring? I thought it ended with uh, yeah, the Yeah, the very last the, picture was, was uh, a drawing ring? of the ring. I thought it was the door. The, no, the door at the back end. No, no, no. I mean of the drawings in the closing credits. Oh, that's what I thought too. It ended with the the. No, the... no. It was it was the ring, oh, okay. which was very appropriate. But this one, was, I thought they would have done like the mountain, Adore. the lonely mountain, or or you know, oh, you know something I, iconic. You want Evangeline Lilly? Or Evangeline mm -hmm. Lilly? You know what I would have done? This might be like you know too egotistical, but I would have had it where it's like Peter Jackson and the entire crew like waving goodbye. That's it. We're yeah, done. that's a bit that, much. Yeah, that's yeah. like what they did at the end of uh, that last X Files movie. Oh god, oh, they that did was that? fucking stupid. Bye. Yeah. We're not except doing it was just, except it was just, uh, well, no, now they are doing it. Yeah, I know, but oh yeah. wait, never mind, uh, let's retract that. Re re redact <laughs> it, redact it. Clearly, clearly the aliens did not invade on December of 2012 like was like oh, they said they? in the finale. Or did they? I guess we'll find out. Boop, boop, well, speaking of goodbyes... Boop, 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 boop. One last goodbye for the Hobbit Battle of Five Armies. I'm Nathan. I'm Cameron. I'm David. Are you Thanks. sure this week? Yes, I think. <laughs> Maybe next week I'll be Lister. Let's get that straight. Yeah. All right. Get that straight. <laughs> and uh, I guess that's it. Goodbye. For the commentators, we will, get or you will hear us next time, I guess. But get your Heineken or, you know, fuck that Pabst Blue Ribbon. Yeah. Okay.